We have our facilitator, Julia Novak from RAFTELUS. You have had her before as a facilitator for strategic planning. And she's, I think we're going to review the agenda. Yeah. And do a couple of uh, things on the agenda. And then I'm going to give an update about the goals, which isn't, isn't going to be exhaustive because you have a lot of information in your packet about where we are with implementing various goals and activities. Um, we do have department heads on line in case there are some specific questions that anybody has about uh, where we are with the goals, but we weren't intending to do deep dives into existing programs and goals, unless there's a need for that. Does that Great. sound okay? All right. Well, thanks for having us back. Good to be with you all. Um, and I haven't had a chance to meet Malcolm before today. Um, others of you, we've seen each other multiple times and appreciate we, we that. We forgot to do an administrative. Please do that. Let's be legal. Yeah. Can I call the select board meeting to, to order at 9 11? Excellent. Anything else? Do you have to call the no. roll? No. No. Okay. Great. Sorry about that. No, no problem. So uh, before we jump into strategic planning part of today, I, I do want to just give a little bit of context on the framework um, that we work from. And so we, um, um, I, I'm trying to remember, it was probably four years ago, I think 20, 2018, 2019, we did our first kind of um, strategic planning session with the, the board and constructed a framework um, that you use for identifying important goals and activities. And the framework, can you go to that? Yep, sorry. Um, it's bad if it just read my mind. It doesn't want this. Mm -hmm. um, the framework for the strategic plan is kind of built around a sustainability statement that we came up with. Um, and when I say we, it's the select board that was constituted at that time. So there are three members, Matt be, not being here right now, but that was part of that group. And then others have kind of come on and come on um, over the past uh, several years. And we've continued to kind of reinforce that this is the basis for the work um, of the strategic plan kind of supports this notion that the um, sustainability is kind of the core of everything you do. We did an exercise that you all might find it, it kind of interesting when we first did the strategic plan and we, we asked people to answer um, two questions. What were some things that were true about Nantucket today that were precious? They wanted to make sure were still true 10 years from now. And then what were some things that weren't true today, but that they hoped would be true 10 years from now. And the answers to those questions kind of led us towards several groupings. And those groupings became the focus areas and the focus areas that are used now for the goals that the select board has, and then all of the activities that town administration is working on in support of those goals. So there was a large bucket around housing in terms of kind of things that you wanted to do, be focused on. Um, transportation, I'll, I'll, I will forever remember the transportation one, one of the things that was true then that you, people hoped would still be true in 10 years, that there are no traffic lights on the island. And, and uh, that that you know, kind of picture of, of this island was it's kind of imprinted in my head, but an important part of transportation. Um, environmental leadership, certainly sustainability connects there, but is, but is broader. And there are many things that um, the town does to support um, and, and kind of demonstrate itself as a leader in environmental issues. Um, efficient town operations, that's the good government stuff, the way the town operates, and then quality of life. So some of these things kind of focus in on both what you do um, as a town government, but also how you do them. And so that creates the structure and the basis of the plan. And today, um, for, for Malcolm, you've jumped on a, a bus that's moving very fast, and there are many, many activities that are in progress, um, and issues that have emerged and will continue to emerge over time that take energy and require immediate attention. And we want to spend time today um, updating you on where those things are and kind of developing an understanding of the existing pieces of the plan and what those emerging issues are and hear from you all about um, kind of what your hopes are for for the, the next few months. Um, one of the 
realities that I think we have to acknowledge is that this board um, will be together for certain until the next election. And then there's the possibility of change. And so the question that I wanna open with today and just ask you all as you kind of reintroduce yourselves, what do you hope this board that's together for this short period of time would be known for? And so I'll leave that as the opening question. And um, if the staff wants to just share expectations, that's fine as well when you do the introduction. So anybody want to volunteer the person on their right to go second? <laughs> I'll go. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm Brooke Moore. I was elected in May, um, but had attended every select board meeting for four years. Yeah. So um, I thought I knew a lot and I realized I knew about half of what it takes to do the job. Um, so it's overwhelming and it's big and reading through this strategic plan reinforced my, <gasps> wow, there's a lot yeah. that needs to be done, that is being done, that we need to think about and plan for. So that said, your question was, what can we do in the next six months? And what do you, and what do you want to be done for as a board? Yeah, so I would love to have a path forward on short-term rental, um, the short-term rental question. Um, before May or around that time, um, not maybe fully done, but have a have a path forward, because um, I think that's a, a thing that's really taking a lot of our time. I'd love to see progress on the geotubes and SBPF in the short term, also because it is consuming a lot of time and energy and for years and years, and I think we're at a crossroads mm -hmm. on it. Um, as overwhelming as it feels, I feel like we're going to, it's going to come to some conclusion in the next six months or some direction. Um, and then, of course, my overarching long-term passion is to address this, the systemic housing problem that we have and to try to figure out what we need and more paths to get to what we need. Um, to the to have a sustainable housing market and environment for a healthy community, and by healthy I mean economically, physically, emotionally, um, for our community. So that's my okay. Oh, and then also I'll just add one more. Um, I think we can do a better job around um, ensuring that all needs, human services, people's needs are are taken care of in a more integrated fashion. Thank you. She did it to you, I'm afraid. You get to go next. Oh, well, in addition to those things. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I, I really would like us to be known as the board who finally puts the SPPF conundrum to bed. But um, I mean, I've very much always, and I, I feel like we're well on track for this of solving um, the new Island Home Facility and the Senior Center. And I think that that's on track. It won't be com completed in six months, but I feel like we we will be known for um, for moving that forward and um, getting the right consensus on it. Um, I would let. I mean, my wish list is I would like to make a deal to secure the Craig, the former Craig property, mm. which is next to the Boys and Girls Club. Um. And I think that, that that would be something that, would, that this board would be very well known for if we could make that happen. Um, I'd like to see some path forward with Harbor Place and the way that it functions with, um, with the Green Hound, which we've now secured in terms of our bus transportation. I feel we are already known for getting year-round bus service going. Mm -hmm. and. Um, making that as efficient as possible for our, tra our transportation goals. Um, what else is realistic? Um, I, we need to pass, pass forward with solid waste. And I think that that is something that we need to um, have a better handle on within the next six months with 2025 looming. Yeah, it seemed far away in 2018. <laughs> and I mean, I would like to see us finally get to a, a, 
shovel in the ground at six fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. I'll leave, leave it I'll leave at that. That's a little <laughs> ambitious. <laughs> Libby, did you have any expectations, things you wanted to share to, just to kind of start things from a context point? Well, from an administrative point of view, um, and we've had a lot of discussion about this internally, um, we have a lot going on and we do not have the staff resources to manage it all. So, and the staff resources are difficult to secure because there are a lot of specialized expertise and skills and technical knowledge needed. And those types of resources, either in people or firms, are just hard to find. And it's becoming increasingly difficult to manage everything on a day-to-day -day basis with everything that comes at us. I mean, even the littlest thing takes like the, I'm just gonna give a tiny little example, but, and I, I was complaining about this yesterday, the town manager e-newsletter mm -hmm. um, is largely done by Florencia, our public outreach director, um, but it takes me a good amount of time too, to, it's it's just, you gotta write up stuff. And, and it's, the public seems to like it. We get a lot of very good feedback on it. A lot of people say that they get, um, accurate information from there. And it's an important part of our communications plan and our outreach, but it takes a lot of time. Um, that's just one thing. There's dozens of things like that. So we just, as Greg likes to say all the time, we are a small city and, and he's right. We are a small city and we, for the, for the size of the, the, our population in our area and the, and budget and everything, we have more than any other town that has this type of structure. So just bear that in mind when we're talking about adding new initiatives and new programs. It's it's hard enough to deal with the ones that we have and we're not complaining about it. We're just trying to make it realistic. Um, and either things need to drop off or we need to get somehow get the resources to be able to deal with them before we add lots of new stuff. And we also appreciate the board support because I know that there's been a lot of acknowledgement of what I just said. So thank you. I love everything that Brooke and, and Don said. Whether we can get we can move that needle at all in six months. You know, that's one thing I found doing two terms here that things just move a lot slower than I thought they would. Mm -hmm. And then a little slower than that, um, but I don't know. I think of the, the what would the public say? Oh, that that board for six months, or I'm not sure. But I think what what I would love to walk away with and say, you know, that six months of, of this board was they were really thoughtful and they had really good conversations that added value. And I think that's really challenging to do when there's all the licensure and the things that the select board has to do. So I'm always trying not uh, successfully all the time is to to create an agenda to or put things off or to create space for us to have really good conversations i think we have the last since matthew you came on I, I, I think i've said this I'm like wow that was three really good you know thoughtful conversations like, you know we listen to the public we talk to each other you know we you know we discuss and you know critique and that's what i like the board to be known for to continue to do that and then when i leave so there's no possibility that it's going to be a change, Julian. I'm not running against it. There's mm -hmm. definitely going to be a new, at least one new board member. Um, so I think trying to add value to the staff, which we I think we've already done with the strategic plan. We've given focus so people know where, where to put their limited bandwidth, where to put their time. So mm -hmm. I think with, with that umbrella, trying to um, continue to add value with listening and being inclusive as possible and engage as many people with the short amount of time we have on really complex issues. Thank you. I've had uh, been on the board for about a month now. <laughs> so I'm agree. It's 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 quite daunting. There's an awful lot to do. Uh, going back to something Libby said, a couple of things I'd like to focus on in the next six months. I've never been in an organization ever. Uh, and I'm 75, so I've been in a lot of organizations that's never had enough money or enough people. So to me, it's always a matter of priorities. And I think we have to uh, 
begin to look at what we're not going to do so we can do what we really need to do correctly. Uh, that would be a big item for me. And whether we can do it in six months, I'm not sure, but we have to start it. The two big issues up there, obviously, that everyone housing, I mean, we can't, <laughs> we cannot talk about housing and, and I'm getting very tired of short-term rental discussions. And I think we need to get that fixed and resolved one way or the other. Um, when I was campaigning briefly, if I walked around the island and talked to people, that was the biggest issue. Um, a lot of people very concerned that they were going to lose income. Uh, a lot of debate over how many houses are lost. That all has to be resolved. And we have to, if we go beyond six months, then we all should be voted all out, period. The other thing that really <clears throat> important to me, and I'd like to get a little more effort into that is environmental leadership. Uh, we say we're environmental leaders, but we don't quite get there as, as far as I'm concerned, and we need to push that more. <clears throat> our, our harbor, uh, our water quality needs to, be improved. Uh, we're not going to do that in six months, but we need to start pushing more. I mean, when we see, uh, when I walk by the harbor and I see these absolutely beautiful green lawns right by the harbor, I say, I thought we were supposed to have regulations about that. Or when you hear about swimming pools being dumped in the harbor, we need to do more. And uh, I'm going to try to push that in the the six, at least the six months I had here. Thank you. Rick, anything from you? Um, well, I think <laughs> for me, it's uh, probably the same thing, that, um, a little bit along the lines of what Libby was saying, and probably the same thing I said last time we got together here, which is like the business as usual work, the everyday operating stuff. So if you think of a container, there's X amount of space volume in a container. and the business as usual stuff takes us very near to the top of that container. The change stuff, so called the strategic change stuff, it can, you can't overflow the top of the of the vat and expect that anything's going to get done. So, I'm I'm super um, interested and focused on if there's stuff that we want to do here that's not already in the plan. What is it? more important than which is a little bit what Malcolm said so that we can deprioritize something so that we can actually be effective in what we do. So I actually think I'm saying what Malcolm said. So um because the day to day is is pretty uh enormous here. And you know and, and just to, to put a slightly finer point on it when the day to day is already enormous and you have turnover staff turnover like we do, which is like we've had 32 percent of the staff leave the town this year in the last 12 months, 32% turnover rate. So you think about how much management time that takes to recruit people. You think about how much lost productivity there is. And that's just people who have actually left the town. That's not people who have moved from one job. That number is far higher. So I'm just flagging that it is it is definitely a, there's a finite amount of um, resources here to, to carry out the good work of the town. I like the container example. It's a really good visual. Greg. Um, Rick kind of stole my thunder. I was going to say. Oh, with the uh, you know, we, <laughs> we definitely did. I know. A little bang. Um, obviously, we're looking from different perspectives. So what I would like to hear the board talk about, like they didn't talk about was anything about the day-to-day -day operations, mm -hmm. which... You know, the, I know strategic plan, we're talking about strategic goals, big things, but we can't get there. Um, and I'd like the board to really focus more on how do we get there by staffing our retention, um, morale, and just keeping the engine going. Um, we um, we can't reach these big goals, which for some reasons, like, you know, short-term rental. I know we're just talking about getting a framework in six months, but we can't do that when we don't have staff. And the day-to-day -day is immense. And um, Malcolm just brought up, like, I thought we had regulations for something, and we do, but we don't have anybody to enforce them. And that's the problem we have. We we want to do the right thing. We just can't. And because the board 
dictate something or mandate something or we vote on a regulation doesn't mean people just do it. We know that. So um, that's what I'd like to see a little more uh, focused attention on the internal staffing, um, which is not in any of our like focus areas, which uh, maybe that's part of what Rick was just saying too, that we need to, and, and Malcolm a little bit, but we have to look at maybe what we can do and take some things off the plate. So instead of doing a lot of things really poorly, try to do a few things really good. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what those are. You know, I think that's what this body will be looking at, but it's been a challenge. And Rick has some other stats on, you know, um, employment and retention and things, which are really daunting. Yeah, yeah, that's huge turnover rate. In a in an industry, local <coughs> government industry that typically has very low turnover, and then you compound the challenge of filling those jobs here. It's phenomenal. Yeah. Janet, I would concur with my colleagues about the um, need for staffing to implement the day to day stuff and the goals of the strategic plan. But I also want to say that having in the seat that I sit in as the strategic planning advisor. I have seen this shape some of the way work gets done and priorities get set. Mm -hmm. Not all of you think gets done in it, but it has. For example, the DEI stuff um, is in there and has is making good progress. Uh, and there are a few other examples of things that are going on. I think there is more work on water quality that we need to get more out there than we're doing right now. Uh, but there are little flags that come up, good kinds of flags that indicate we are using this document in this process to shape some way that work gets done for the time. Thank you very much. Yeah, it is It is good to see. I mean, and I, I will say too, as we were preparing for this meeting, just the update um, of, of all the things that are completed or that are now operationalized is significant, um, as are the things that still need to get done. And then, oh, by the way, all these other emerging issues came up that were outlined in that, in that memo. So, so that's kind of where we begin the conversation today, and um, just a, a couple of a couple of pieces. Um, we do have uh, someone who's scheduled at nine forty, George from DEP to to hit he's the. Here. He's here. He's on. He's, yeah. So we have given him kind of a scheduled time, um, which doesn't necessarily naturally flow with the way we would do the update of the. But there was other commitments, um, and we appreciate him zooming in for this. And so since he is here, is there any other context setting you want to do before we do that item, or do you want to just go there? Yeah. Libby, sorry. Oh, me? Because you're going to do the updates. So yeah, I, uh, sure I can just what. go there. You want to just go there? Okay, so we're going to, we are going to um, go straight to there. Okay, so this is our update. Um, Janet has coordinated input from all of the departments that have goals or activities associated with the focus areas. So um, starting with housing, and there's, uh, again, there's a lot of detail in your packets. And as Julia said, there actually are quite a lot of things that have been completed. There are a lot of things in progress and there are some things that haven't started yet for a variety of reasons. So just to review, this is our housing focus area. We have five associated goals and a number of activities associated with each goal. So I'm not, I'm not gonna read all of this, but just to summarize, with, the, with support from the board and guidance from the Affordable Housing Trust and the strategic plan, we have had some good success in accomplishing some of our, implementing some of our housing goals. There's, there's a lot more to do and a lot of things are, are in the process of being explored. We need to continue keeping an eye on our subsidized housing inventory. Um, other initiatives have been incorporated into that particular component of the housing focus area. Um, each initiative does generate additional activities that continue to require additional staff focus and resources and it's, we're finding it a little challenging to get to all of this. And a lot of this requires numerous, the input of numerous uh, staff people. For example, our town employee housing initiative. This has several components to it, including our $1 million pilot program for um, emergency, basically housing assistance. And that has required the input, again, of a lot of staff people. We've recruited some people from FinCom and 
other areas to help us try to come up with a way to implement this program. Most recently, the Nantucket Community Foundation, we were hoping that we could operate the program through a grant to them and have them administer the program, but that they have declined that because of tax privacy and other legitimate reasons that are going to make us have to figure out how to do it, it looks like, um, or figure out some other avenue to implement that program. So that is still in the works and it certainly hasn't taken off like we had hoped. Um, town employee housing, we have acquired some properties that we are renting to town employees. And that has kind of come at us in a way that we are not prepared for. We do not have an infrastructure in place to adequately and sufficiently and appropriately really manage rental housing. And there's a lot to managing rental housing. If anybody has ever managed one housing rental unit, there are landlord issues, renter issues, maintenance issues, how, who do you put in <clears throat> issues, rent collection issues, a, a, a lot of things. And our, our maintenance department is already ex ridiculously understaffed and they can't even maintain the town owned buildings. Never mind the rental housing that we are now finding, finding it imperative to secure so that we can have people doing this work. So those are some things that we definitely need to keep working on. Emerging issues with housing um, or that are housing related include the short-term rental work group work. And that is obviously, um, that's, to, that's starting to consume some staff time. And it is, you know, not, I'm, I'm just gonna say, it's, it's not um, smooth sailing, it really. It's controversial and, um, I think the board has indicated that we need to get it right and not rush through it. So that takes time and effort and resources. Um, and I already mentioned the um, the housing program. Uh, one other thing with the housing program is we do have a meeting with representatives from each union at the beginning of December. And we are hoping to get some kind of buy-in or feedback or reaction to the program and where we are with it. Okay, before she goes on to transportation, um, let me let me tell you what I'm doing over here. <laughs> so th these are all the activities that are currently in the document that you read. So we're kind of populating this wall. These gray items are things that have been accomplished. And so, you know, I'm, they're up here. I'm going to take them off. It's kind of a, we should be happy. We, you know, certain things you've achieved. Um, the yellow ones are operationalized. This means it's something that you can never stop working on. It's become part of the daily work. And the blue things are the things that, that need to be worked on. And I, I can't help but, but think as I was listening to Libby talk about housing and knowing how important this is to you, the good thing is and if I just use the rent subsidy, which is here as this emerging issue, that program that she mentioned. So the good thing is, and the amazing thing is that a million dollars was set aside to help deal with this problem. And there aren't staff available to just do it. It has to be worked into already busy work plans. A nonprofit's not available. There's not the right partner that's been identified yet. And so as you all think about, you know, the victory of even, even having properties that are available that weren't available, that's great. And now we have to maintain them and we don't have people to maintain the things we do. And so Hear that just understanding, not that it's a complaint, because it's 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 a great gift. It's wonderful that the, the community is making these investments. There needs to be corresponding investment in the staff to do the work, or progress will be stalled. And that's I think part of the swirl that you that you hear. So so I'm gonna just take these off. Um the ones that so the ones that were marked as complete in your in your um, memo, and then you've got these two bright yellow emerging issues that weren't there a year ago when we did the last update on the strategic plan but now are there and demand like this is you know what you want to have a path forward on short-term rentals in the next six months that's significant and dealing with this million dollar um rent subsidy program so <clears throat> i hope this is helpful as we kind of illustrate things that are going on so is each um kind of square 
a different activity. The, the, one of our strategic plan yes. goals. They okay. correspond with the goals. So just for example, safe harbor status, um, the ongoing one, um, that Nantucket's on a path to remain safe harbor and it's on its way to being a 10% requirement within the next four years. So that's kind of an ongoing, um, you know, an in-progress thing. Um, the one that's uh, part of the, you know, the ones that are part of the ongoing work plan now, they've been operationalized. Yeah. Is maintaining safe harbors, mm -hmm. purchasing the land at these couple of properties. Um, and then I took one safe harbor, one that was off, um, because you all were be able to extend the safe harbor um, through 2022. So just that that's the so the goal and then the corresponding activities for each of the goals within um, the housing area. Okay. All right. Thank you, Julia. Back to you. Okay, transportation is our next focus area. We have three main goals associated with that and a number of activities associated with the goals. So we have hired a transportation program manager who is Patrick Reed, finally. We were, that was a, a challenge to get him hired. He is um, working remotely and comes over on a regular basis, but that is, sidebar, I think we're going to need to be looking at remote work for people who aren't going to be able to afford to live here. Um, we are seeking to hire a parking coordinator and a year-round dedicated parking enforcement officer to implement a downtown parking management system. Now, the downtown parking management system um, is ideally a paid parking program. However, even without paid parking, there is a lot of parking to manage if we are going to manage it on a year-round consistent basis. So, um, neither of these positions have been hired yet. Uh, one, the parking coordinator seemed promising uh, fairly recently, but the person backed out because we uh, have salary issues and housing affordability. So we're back to square one on that. We're seeing if we can possibly do some reconfiguration of that position. We are finishing the details on forming the Transportation and Parking Advisory Committee, which you all talked about a few weeks ago. That is um, currently sitting on our desk and I need to get back to it. How to use our license plate reader data is still under review. Um, we are collecting it um, during the summer, mostly when the parking enforcement, the officers, the um, CSOs are doing the ticketing. So we, we have the data, but we don't really have anybody yet to interpret the data and analyze it and process it into an understandable manner that might show us what we need to do and what decision-making it might be helpful for. We have made several steps in completing a sidewalk or um, a sidewalk pedestrian and bike path route from Mid-Island to the ferries. Um, there are a couple of things in the planning stages. And again, we have a lack of project management resources to get these things finished. So underway, we have Newtown sidewalk. We are trying to secure an engineer to, to and a project manager for that project. We have Pleasant Street from Williams out to right here, this right this area to the roundabout, um, as well as a um, complementary project, but separate on Sparks from roughly the school to the roundabout as well. And in the planning process, we have Pleasant Street from Silver to Maine, the street itself and sidewalk improvements. So there, and those are all pretty big, significant projects that require a lot of no, What about Williams between Williams and Five Corners? Corners? Oh, oh, sorry. I thought I said that. You said Williams to here first. I'm sorry. I, what I actually meant was Five Corners yeah. to here. Okay. okay. <laughs> sorry. Which is the hardest part of the see. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> um, Patrick Reed is really um, a godsend in working on all this stuff. And he is very actively working on this with um, some other people. So that it is it's progressing, but it's sort of slow going. We have some overlapping ideas or or proposals for Washington Street, which involve coastal resiliency. Um, improvements or or, or um, coastal resiliency, what's the word, um, approaches, as well as which, in, which involve elevating the road, 
and the sidewalk, which is going to impact <laughs> properties. And the land bank has. Oh, I feel bad I didn't get you anything at the bake shop. I just wasn't thinking when I was there. Nancy, uh -huh. <laughs> Nancy you're unmuted. There you go. <laughs> Nancy, you can come out here and get some get stuff deal. we have from Wicked. You got um, donuts here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll yeah. bring it down later. Um, okay, now, uh, what was I saying? Uh, Washington Street. Washington. Land Bank has um, secured design assistance for uh, along the waterfront a pathway system. It's kind of, it's a boardwalk, and so we need to work out how that's all going to integrate with the road elevation project. And uh, on either side of that, towards the island home area, there is some thinking about how to make a walkway there and then how to integrate it with um, the rest of the waterfront down by Harbor Place. I have some questions about that. Yeah. But we can get to that later. Or do you want me to ask it now? Um, go, go ahead. I so, so I guess my question is, are the initiatives of the land bank driving the prioritization of town staff? And do we need? No. OK. They, they are very self-sufficient. They okay. ask for input. But our road elevation project, for example, on Washington Street is years away. It's millions and millions of dollars. Okay. And it is not, I, I don't think their, their project most likely at some point will be done before ours. Okay. Um, and we just need to make sure that future planning for the elevation of the road is taken into consideration with okay. their design. Okay. And, and they are very well, much aware of that. Right. So I just wanted to make sure that the tail wasn't wagging the dog in terms of your time. Yeah, Stop I would time. say, I would say no. Okay. Um, any other questions about transportation? I should have, um, with housing, I, I don't, I, again, I don't want to do a deep dive into this and I don't want to go down any rabbit holes, but I probably should uh, ask the departments if I missed anything or if they wanted to clarify anything. So if, if anybody's out there with clarifying um, the transportation goal, speak now. Yeah, there's nothing, nothing to add from the PD side. Okay, so if you don't have anything to add, um, you don't have to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do have something to add, then, um, then just shout it out. Yeah. Okay, I, I probably should have done that on housing, but we can um, come back to that. Did you hit the emerging issues on um, No, oh, sorry, no, yeah. no, I did not yet. So emerging issues with transportation include a couple of things. The Surfside Area Water and Transportation Enhancement Project um, which was approved at the 2022 annual town meeting and the ballot. This project has actually um, moved remarkably quickly, all things considered. And um, thanks to Greg and Chuck, um, Erica and Rick and others who have helped make this thing progress. It's the extension of the water main west of the airport. Um, it extends what the airport did. And as you all know, over the summer, uh, last summer, was it last summer, the summer of 2021? I think we began discussing Lover's Lane, or was that this summer? I honestly, it came. 21, okay. Uh, see, it all just glommed together. Yeah, glommed together. Um, we had a project to reconstruct Lover's Lane, and it became apparent quickly when the water main extension um, started getting planned that it was going to involve Lover's Lane. So it turned into a bigger project than we had originally anticipated. And as a result, it requires a lot of resources and a lot of um, staff involvement. We have a forum coming up. Is that yes, on uh, Thursday, December 8th. Thursday, December 8th is on your announcements for tomorrow night for mostly for abutters. Anybody can join into it, but no, it's- announcements. Yeah, Okay. And um, anyway, it's that's, that's a large project, but it is making some progress. We do have uh, a funding gap, however, and that is going to be in the fiscal 24, um, among the fiscal 24 capital projects. The other emerging issue, as you all know, is motorized bikes and scooters on multi-use paths. And I think most recently, what we talked about was, is there a way to develop some regulations? Town Council was looking at that. And secondarily, or maybe primarily, as it might come about, um, what sort of public safety education program can we launch that helps people hopefully maybe behave a little better with these devices than um, is being reported? And that, um, that, that sort of, thing we have been discussing about a bike safety 
video for quite some time now. But again, the resources, if we want to do it right and we want to make it something that people are actually going to pay attention to and watch and take away from and remember, it has to be really good. So we're now, um, when you'll hear uh, Florencia provide um, our proposed communications plan tomorrow night, one of the things that we are proposing and which in fact we have already started doing is to secure contracted resources with communications firms to help develop tools like that. Okay, next focus area is environmental leadership. We have two big goals associated with that and a number of activities. Solid waste. Um, okay, George, listen carefully in case I say something wrong. Um, we have an internal group planning next steps with solid waste management. We have one board member on it, one person from the finance committee and several other staff members, including George Aronson, who is our solid waste consultant. Um, I think Julie might have associated you with DEP, George. But we, we know you're very, very friendly with them, but you are not actually um, with them. Um, Forgive me, George. Yeah, yeah, sorry, George, about that. Um, there is a comprehensive list of planned activities and activities that are underway in your written update in the packet. We have what is kind of becoming a growing desperate need for a solid waste manager and a recycling coordinator, and we've been working on how to reconfigure those positions, or is there some other way to get at those things? But there's a lot of staff time being dedicated to solid waste planning that could be handled by a solid waste manager that we don't have right now. Water quality. Um, Jeff Carlson and his team has have developed a long-term water quality management plan, which is again, stuck on my desk and needs to get onto a board agenda so that Jeff can have the board review that. It's very comprehensive. Um, we have been discussing a way to get at stormwater issues. As you all know, those are becoming, uh, what's the word? Um, very uh, frequently paid attention to problems. And when they are occurring, people are very loud about it. Understandably so, because it is affecting their property. So we are hoping to develop an enterprise operation separate from DPW that would be under the sewer department to enhance stormwater mitigation needs and projects. We have the we have proposed funding or we will be proposing funding for a stormwater manager in fiscal 24. And we're working out how to separate the stormwater function from the sewer function. I think I've mentioned this at prior town manager monthly report monthly reports at your meetings, but there is a growing trend among municipalities to combine water resources. And these are um, things that are sort of below the ground, sewer, wastewater, stormwater. Um, well, sewer and wastewater are kind of the same thing, but they have a lot of different components to them and wa actual water. And then DPW's responsibility is above the road, fixing the roads, grading the roads, reconstructing the roads, doing the sidewalks, all, all of that. So we're working on how that will be able to function. Um, one of the issues that we need to get at is until, unless or until we have fees and some sort of revenue stream associated with stormwater, it will have to be funded through the general fund. Um, there's a bit of an issue, not a bit of an issue. There is an issue funding stormwater projects out of the sewer enterprise because the, that is intended to be paid for by the sewer users and they are paying for sewer, not wastewater. I mean, sorry, not stormwater. So that is a bit of a challenge that we need to get at. But, in, but we are proposing some um, significant funding in the fiscal 24 budget, which you'll see in a couple of weeks for stormwater. PFAS, education and outreach are underway. We have hired our environmental contamination officer. What is it called? Environmental contamination um, uh, administrator. Administrator. administrator thank, thank you. you. And um, that so so that was a big step in the right direction to alleviate uh, other staff members from having to spend so much time on PFAS, which is very much all encompassing. And there there remain a lot of things that are emerging with. PFAS. Um, emerging issues associated with environmental leadership include 
The nip bottle ban, which was approved at the 2022 annual town meeting and has now been approved by the attorney general. We need to develop an outreach plan on that. Uh, that goes into effect in 2023. Green communities, we were designated a green community in 2019. There are annual requirements that need resources and staffing. Our energy coordinator, Lauren Sinatra, has done a fantastic job doing what she can do, but there are there are a lot of things that just need more resources in order to get at this. We need to develop a climate action plan um, sooner rather than later. All new buildings, I don't know that we have to retrofit existing, but they will be required to have LEED certification. And that in and of itself is going to take a position right, basically to um, manage. We have a the re when we when you yeah. say all new buildings, you say municipal buildings or yeah, buildings? Okay. Municipal. Yep. Um, we have a re resurfaced project with the Army Corps and Martha's Vineyard. It's a joint project on supply chain impacts and carrying capacity for the islands. And that has that started started? Have we it, it's in it's, the works with it, the um, Army Corps of Engineer right now. We're waiting for them to respond. Okay. And Who's so coordinating that? Um, Greg and Chuck. Chuck. Okay. Yeah. So George, did or anybody else who's associated with the environmental leadership goal, um, did you want to quickly add anything or correct anything? Okay, not, not hearing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, efficient town operations. We have two main goals associated with that. We've got underway. Um, a facilities master plan and we the board agreed to the concept of a facilities master plan and the plan itself in 2021 one of the components of that plan was a centralized or a central municipal facility at the four fairgrounds site and as we know the funding for design of that facility failed at the 2022 annual town meeting we had a lot of ballot questions and a lot of very uh costly capital projects. And this one just didn't get any attention really um, in advance of town meeting and the election. So that may be why it failed. We haven't convinced the public enough of its need. Um, but as we know, having so many remote buildings is re requires a lot of staff. And these buildings are aging um, and they have Almost every single one of them, um, not all of them, but almost all of them have issues with either hazardous materials that need to be removed or things that are just falling apart and need to get fixed. Um, we have additional facility planning underway with concessions, parks, DPW, the Island Home slash Senior Center, and a lot of associated staff time is going into that. We have a number of consultants hired for those things. And we're working to get some of those off the ground and finalize what it's going to take to get them off the ground. We have funding for some of them, not all of them. Um, and I'm just going to mention uh, one of these projects, which has required a lot of time, which is the town building window replacements. And it's not just window replacements of the town building. As we um, please don't look too closely at the windows of the town building. They are in terrible shape. And they're going to be very costly to fix. It's not just replacing the glass of the window. It is the entire frame basically of almost every single window. And it's also some windows, it sort of expanded to some other nearby buildings, the 20 South Water Building, the East Chestnut Building, uh, the um, 25 Federal Street Building where cultural and tourism is, is going to be a separate project. But that, so here's how things um, uh, scope creep or well, if we do this, we should do that, starts to happen. And when we were looking at all these windows with the, with the um, architect, we started looking at the culture and tourism building. And then we got into the bathrooms over there. And so long story short, that turned into a, we need to look at all the municipal bathrooms project. So that is now a separate project that is gonna need that needs attention because these bathrooms, some of them are in really not great condition and they need to be upgraded or improved or repaired. So this one window project turned into a couple of other projects. The window project, um, it came to our attention kind of late in the game that we should rethink the type of window 
and make sure we are purchasing energy efficient windows, not something lesser than that, which might not last as long and might not be as efficient. So that required a kind of a redo of what that is going to cost. And depending on the cost of this overall project, it is possible that we will hit the owner's project manager threshold and then we're in a different ball game with cost of the overall project. So it sounds simple. Let's just replace the windows in the town building, but it, it turns into something much more massive and it's um, trim that needs to be painted there. The cupola needs to be addressed um, and some siding in the associated other buildings and that campus downtown. So it, I'm just saying it turns into something much bigger. Yes. I have real concerns with putting any money into that East Chestnut building or the visitor service building. I mean, I understand keeping them stable, but those buildings need to be torn down and something if, new needs to be built there as part of our facilities master plan. And the more we continue to put money into things that aren't, that should not stay, well, it um, makes me crazy. Yeah, it, I think it makes all of us a little crazy, but the fact is we have nowhere to put people and they need to have decent working conditions. Yeah. Um, let's take a look at where we are right now. I know. This is really not, um, I can see why nobody wants to meet in here because uh, look at it. How And we are under, you know, does it stay or go? We, we don't know. We're trying to work with the HTC to see if it can stay longer, but how much money do we want to put into this? Um, and in the meantime, things are going to take a very long time to get through the voters and get funded, and we can't have people working in um, substandard conditions. Maybe we didn't need this back on town meeting this year. Um, we, you all should maybe talk about that as if it's going to be a priority, but if it is going to be a priority, we need to drop some stuff and focus entirely on um, getting that outreach done on something like that. So this becomes the poster child of why we need a, a new facility, honestly, mm -hmm. because people see this. And if they understand that we can't live without this until we get that. Mm -hmm. I think there's a there's a message that we can communicate with it with some outreach on the conditions of stuff and <clears throat> what we think it's going to cost to just hold on to stuff that we would rather move out of yep. and get rid of. Yeah. Should should I make that a it's not that what you just said is not up here. Like should this should we put it up here as something is an emerging issue? Um, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> As an emerging issue. I've never had a phone call from the same number I don't know five times in a row. And it's really bothered me. So oh, you I might want to have it. It's Well done. Hello. Other than doing that, I've, yeah. Don is a great point, but I, I've been in so many situations where I work now, yeah, where you don't want to put any more money in, it, and then it's ten years later, right. and we have, nothing has been done, yep. and yeah. so the staff have to work in. Yeah. And towards the school. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Is it? Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Mr. Okay. S. I don't know. Put it under voice. Um, yes, I, I hear you. Because even if we are going to put something else there, we know it's going to take five years. Yeah. If I could turn it into seven or eight. Yeah, and, and we, we need to put people somewhere. We already have, even with even with some of the um, sort of workarounds we've had to do to place people in different buildings, um, it's it's very crowded. The Just the four fairgrounds building, two, two fairgrounds building, I kept saying, I meant two earlier. Uh, the building that PLUS is in, that is not intended to be an office building. That was intended to be an electric utility building with a couple of offices in it. Now it's jammed with offices. It has an uninsulated garage where records are kept, but there's nowhere else to put this operation. And we've we had to reconfigure the old fire station to put staff in there. And where else are they going to go? Yeah. So 
hence the central municipal facility idea. But but yes, we need to put more public outreach into it. But again, it's it's a it's a significant project. <clears throat> it is tens of millions of dollars for a new building. Over time, would we save that amount? Quite possibly, because we're not heating and fueling and um, lighting and cleaning and having people in all these multiple other buildings. But you know. Brooke, I've used that when people reach out to me, especially when this first went up, you know, how they could even drive by and look at it, how disgusted. And I said, we, we all agree, like town staff agree, like nobody wants it, but here's our problem. There's nowhere else to go. And so it gives me a good talk, a lot of good talking points to explain, like, well, why can't you just meet and do it in town building? Oh, let me tell you about that. Your DEI office and this and this and expanding here and trying to create these additional services because this is what everybody wants. There has to be space for them. And, I, and like I always say, you have to give staff the tools to do the job you're asking them to do. And some of it is the basic office space and windows that work. Mm -hmm. And computers and technology. Yeah. Um, investing in technology, speaking of that, is uh, another goal area. Um, and a couple of our activities associated with that, including ex the exploration of adding Wi Fi at beaches and parks. Town wide Wi Fi, this is mentioned further in your packet, like a, like a public Wi Fi situation, is most likely not very feasible without, again, a significant investment in staffing and funding. So we're focusing on adding it to beaches and parks. Uh, cybersecurity is a major focus in the IT world right now. We've added a new position um, entirely focused on cybersecurity and we also won an award for our efforts. Um, emerging issues with um, Efficient town operations include Nantucket's form of government. As we know, we had a presentation a couple of weeks ago, and we have a couple of citizen warrant articles relating to this, and this is starting to take some additional focus. Developing, developing a communications plan, at, as you, I think you all know, at your workshop, governance workshop in July, we spent a good amount of time talking about communications and how to get more proactive rather than reactive, and um, We've had, been having a lot of internal discussion on that, and you're going to have, again, a presentation tomorrow night with Florencia on our communications plan. And just as, as an aside, at our, our, and I might mention this again tomorrow night, at our Cape Cod managers meeting, which was here in October, we spent a good amount of time talking about communications and public outreach and community engagement. And every town had kind of the same, was sort of in the same situation how to get accurate information out to the public and how to get more re more proactive rather than reactive. And everyone was sort of traveling down similar pathways of developing communications plans, hiring public outreach staff and engaging with specialized firms, with firms who specialize in different types of communication like community engagement, again, surveys, developing public outreach for specific programs and initiatives, things like that. Recruitment and retention of staff across all departments. We've we've mentioned we've touched on that quite a bit already this morning. Um, there's another thing that we've been talking about, which is um, going to start seriously hitting us in the next three to five years when we have longtime employees retiring. We've already started seeing some of this. There's a, a loss of institutional knowledge. We're we're trying to capture some of that loss within our succession planning process, which we are also launching. But again, it requires a, a, a serious amount of time. And as Rick had mentioned earlier with employee turnover, that alone, it's not just recruiting and attracting people and getting them to work here. It is the time and effort spent over and over and over of training new employees who continually don't stay long and leave. In your succession planning, did you guys come up with a general estimate of like the next five or 10 years? 20% of those long-term employees will be retiring or some number. I think Amanda has something like yeah. that. Yes. Right. And, then, and those people will obviously have secure housing or they wouldn't be in that position for 15, 20, 30 years. And when they leave, they have to be the place with somebody who most likely will not have secure housing. And that's scary. Yeah, it is scary. I mean, that really the loss, the loss of the institutional knowledge cannot be um, overemphasized. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
and the getting them yeah. here. Okay, so that was, um, I don't know, does any, I don't know that we had departments uh, heads on here who wanted to add anything, but if just, just to give them a chance, did anybody want to add anything or correct anything? Amanda or anybody? If, if you don't, then you don't have to say anything. Okay, that's it. Anybody? Okay, um, lastly, quality of life focus area. We had a couple of goals there. And we've spent, as Janet indicated earlier, a lot of time on diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI. We completed an equity assessment in August. We expect a DEI strategic plan sometime over the winter, and that may identify the need for additional resources. And I really want to, um, to give a shout out to Dr. McCarthy, who has spent a great deal of time working on all of this. And, you know, some, some, we're all very busy and we need to spend time on DEI, but sometimes it starts to become like, how am I gonna fit that in? And he's really been um, doing a great job in trying to operationalize it and integrate it into um, the town departments and agencies. Human services, we have expanded somewhat human services um, offerings and initiatives with the hire of our human services director in November of 2020. We have a focus on behavioral health and vulnerable populations at this point, and that will continue. And I think that concludes the update. Yeah, that's okay. Unless, um, oh, um, and I, I guess on that, I should see if anybody, any department heads want to make any additional comments about the quality of life goal. Yes. Okay, not seeing any. Okay, so there are um, 59 activities up here on the wall that are um, not just part of ongoing operations. They're in progress, or there's these emerging issues um, that it seems like the emerging issue comes up and there's no question, but that you will address it. If you have to be reactive, you have to respond to it. And so they are, they become priorities of the town. So I think what I want you all to do, and I appreciated the, the comments about, you know, both the things that are really important to you and they're, they're up here. And I, re, I did put up here about the outreach for town offices on town meeting, you can rephrase it however you want, but I wanted to make sure that was there. Um, but I want you to like spend a minute and look at the wall, or you can look at your at your papers if you prefer what we sent you in advance. And are there things that are in progress, or kind of something that still needs to be worked on, that you would say, let's pause on this. This is not where we need to focus our energy right now. This is not the uh, the, the the priority from your perspective. Um, and then I want you to be able to kind of double down on the things that. I'll give you three, three things that are this we have to really be focused on each of the three in the next six months. Like this is something we have to deal with. So do you want us to try to, to pull three things off as well, just for structure? Yeah, we need oh. these. We need we need to pull things off. I am I was all gonna, in favor of that. Libby, you know, what she would want. My like. job is to get elected officials to pull things off the list. So <laughs> time and accomplish something so please yeah spend spend a couple minutes look at your notes look at the wall um would it be helpful for you to like have a dots like you could make a mark on it and say this i would take off if this is yeah. my important yeah. okay i'm going to give you each um three dots in two colors uh green is going to be go and red is going to be stop doing it okay and three what my I don't really um, I don't start with yeah, one. Give me your dots. Go, go ahead. I'll give you I'll give you we'll do we're it like go. if we're gonna do a dot do it on yeah. I think sorry I wasn't true. listening. No, that's just reading. I never Bad, bad. Okay, so three, one, two. 
free. No, those are stopped doing. I'll come back and get you a free. Okay. Those are three stopped doings. Here's your stops. Did I give you yours? There's the third green. Slightly different color. Don't read anything into it. Extra red Any green dots? I'm sorry. This is the first time I've got yes. Is that okay? We don't want to sleep that. I have more red ones. Actually, I feel like I could give you unlimited red dots because, uh, yeah, I know if you want to get rid of them, so that's I think welcome. So you can stop at least now. Here you go. Just, yeah, give me more red dots. I got plenty. Thank you much. I still think you know, it's Oh, good. Yeah, there we go. It was the most absurd thing ever. It was the people who like you know do those spray on your lawn, mm -hmm. and it was then um, the gate is open so they can get to the yard, but they just want to make sure it was okay. Can you call me five times for that? Like I honestly like, thought it was like some, something from my yeah. husband's work. Like it was like what yeah. is this? Like you couldn't just have to do that, right? No, if only I could tell my email. Does it tell you it's charged by remote? It does tell. Yeah. 
for sure. And all you may think. I wonder if it's like a you know, where you want to just pop it in. That's why you're done. Yeah, I don't know. But we'll see. Yeah, it's just like a Picture. I mean, I have the word not to be no gun, so I was going to discard. And then they'll be good, too. Yeah. 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 Just in terms of what was written to all of us to make it over to the ones that have red dots. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to pass. I texted them. He said he his oh, did you too? Yeah. His calendar was messed up and he had an employee issue but the try to figure it out. Yeah, he's only by eleven there. He's pulling out and oh. he's trying to get to the point where he can leave. Mm -hmm. Do you want to take that green off? Is that what that meant? Yeah, it won't come up. Oh, it won't come up. I'm going to think. I'm just going to receive. I cross. I, I, I see it. Right. Right. Three greens. I know, but somebody, somebody dropped the green. I don't know whether it was me. I can't remember how many. Somebody is in the waiting room. Yeah, yeah. Welcome. How many greens do you have left? I have no greens. Um, I don't think so. Uh, Hard to watch so Pete and we go over there. Would you sit up? Yeah, my mother would be very unhappy with that. This probably by your middle name. My father had enough trouble remembering my name and my brother, so I was often Craig. Yeah. I'm going to have that problem come next year. Call one kid in the name. Yeah. My mother would stop at the top, start at the top until she got to her name. And then she'd stop. How many? <laughs> a lot. Siblings? Ten. Why did I never know that? Why? Wow. Where are you? you favorite. Know? What number are you? <laughs> What's your favorite? Eight. Number eight. That's a long time to get to you. <laughs> At the end of the letter. By the time she got to you, she was pulled down, though, probably. Eight. How many twins? I don't know. Oh, so well, right. Your poor, oh, mom, you're your poor mother. Pregnant every other year. Yeah. Nope. Nope. 
Greg, I'm sure had a funny joke there, but you know. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, and thanks for your willingness to um, to identify some things that we may might not just be as important right now as as we thought they would be. So, what I want to do is I want to um, kind of pull off the ones that have the red dots uh, uh, to read them to you all. And then what Libby, and she can ask for support as needed um, to kind of say, well, what would it mean if we didn't do this thing? And then see where you all are. Because for the most part, one person has put red dot, there's a couple of two. But what does that mean you know, if we don't do it? So the first one up here is, um, it's under the goal of incentives for year-round rentals. Um, there's the two activities are the first one, evaluation of program like Vales and D and other pros programs, Sedona, Arizona, and their efficiency efficacy to create and preserve housing opportunities for year-rounders. So what would it mean if you didn't do that, Libby? That you you're, this would be a task that staff would not do? When people say, well, how do they do it in Sedona? You would say, I don't know, and we're not going to find out. Well, we have started looking at some of this, and I think we've found that um, our uniqueness is really a thing. And the conditions in other places, including Sedona, are just not the same. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we've found enough of a program there that looks like it would be fruitful here to follow up on it. So that's probably what we would say. So you so the bottom line is you won't you won't do this activity and that's probably okay. Well that would be my opinion because okay. my focus is going to be largely on keeping the town running. Right. And that does involve employee housing and community housing. Um, that particular item um, I I don't know is that very valuable, okay. but that's just my opinion. Brooke, so I'm going to say why I put red dots on those two things. Oh, sure. And we we, the other one is the creation of a community land trust underway to aid in the effort to keep year round housing oh, and the year round family and STEM. No, I didn't do that. Okay, then okay. I take it all back. So, just... so uh, or maybe I put it on the wrong one. We've done some investigating on diff some of these options, mm -hmm. and they're really just more complicated than mm -hmm. is worthy of spending time trying to create. Okay. Rental subsidies, I may have stuck the wrong one. One of them is rental subsidies to bring the emerging issue one. Yeah, is it rental subsidies? Yeah. That's a yeah, yeah that sure one stuck that one. Okay. Okay. No, 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 no. It's rental subsidies to move um from short-term rentals to year round. Isn't that up there? Anyway, the, the the bottom line is our market is so complex that um trying to craft a program like that. It just it's just not worth the effort for the for the potential reward, I don't think. And the cost would be too high. There are other more effective ways to do it, I guess is what I'm getting at. Is that something so, that the town would need to do? Is there somebody else that could do well, that? Well, it's it's housing office staff time. Yeah. That and the affordable housing trust. Look, can, can I just get up and read? Yes, you see you what I see what you did. Uh, yes. Did something in error. I did take your one off here that you X'd out. Yeah, uh, yeah, I just prioritize the view. Uh, this, if I did that, that's a mistake. We'll get to it and see if anyone else did it. Okay. Did anyone put one on, on incentives for year round? We should initialize our. Well, this is the subsidy funds. program for for town. And that's that. different. I did that. Never mind. Okay. I was, I had something else. Okay, like so that. do you think this one I should take off? Creation of community. Like Unless someone else did it. Is underway. Did anyone put a red dot here? Yep, they did. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. Taking it off. I don't follow instruction. But could we, since it's already? Well, it's not really a, it's it's not really a town activity too, which so we can remove it for that reason. It's a it's a private nonprofit that's been created. So, well, so is there? Let's get so let's let's dispose of this one or not. So you've heard Libby say it's probably not worth the effort. Right. Brooke seems to agree. Do others of you agree that this is probably not something you want town staff to be focusing on right now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. And Libby, do you want to ask staff if they have any heartburn about this coming off the plate or if it makes them smile? Or do you um, talk to them later? I think I know what 
the answer is going to be, but just in case, um, okay. I think everybody here is not going to have a problem with it, but I, um, Tucker or anybody else on, do you have a problem with it? Taking off the rental incentive uh, item, I'm smiling. Okay, <laughs> Tucker smiles. So Carter, I'm giving this to you to make sure you take off the right one. So that comes off the list. All right, the next one that has a red dot that might be an error, the creation of a community land trust is underway to aid in the effort to keep year-round housing in the year-round family and stem the tide of conversion to seasonal or investment properties. So that is a good initiative. It's not a town initiative. It, it's not It's not going to require staff time. It's going to be a private nonprofit. Do you, so. do you concur with this, that this is not a town staff? It does not impact town staff? Um, yes, I think there may be some time when town staff gets pulled into things like uh, the acquisition of some property Support. or something like that, but it wouldn't be staffed by municipal okay. employees. So I'm going to take this red dot off. It stays up here, okay? Okay, let's speak to the emerging issue of having a million dollars Town employee rental subsidy program, and Don, you said this was your red dot. Do you want to? Do you want to? You want to speak to it before? I yeah, I mean, to I mean, I think it was. It's a worthy idea, but I think in practice, it's not going to be at all effective. Um, there's too much um, bargaining involved, and um, and I think that money could be spent in a better way to promote housing. Ruby, when you say bargaining, do you mean actual collective bargaining? The implications of having to collectively bargain this money mm -hmm. make it impractical. It takes up too much time uh, for too little reward. Gotcha. Okay. Libby. Um, I might look to Rick to um, elaborate on this, but um, I'm going to say we probably all have kind of mixed feelings about this because we have we have a goal of trying to assist those of our employees who are spending the most amount of their income on housing. That's the goal here. And as Don has indicated though, it is going to require bargaining. And we've looked around at other agencies on island to see how they are handling this sort of thing. And the hospital, for example, I think tried something down the road of what we're trying to propose here and ended up saying we're just going to get every, give every one of our employees x because it's, it's easier mm -hmm. um that doesn't mean it's fair but it's easier mm -hmm. um so we were you know we maybe our goal is a little too lofty i don't know but the point was to help those in most need um do you mm -hmm. want to add yeah, no, I, I i think that's exactly right and I, I i think we put in an enormous amount of effort like way more than 100 man hours on, on this thing at this point in time and we have looked at multiple iterations of this and to libby's point this for, for us to give everybody the same amount of money is ineffective we need to make sure that the people who are most challenged can afford to stay so they can remain in the workforce so I would say we put in a ton of time. We have one more meeting with it. We have a meeting with the unions coming up in about a week and a half. Mm -hmm. I think we continue through that meeting. If we don't get anywhere with, with if it has to be that we're going to give every employee a thousand dollars, let's just take it, take it off the wall. If mm -hmm. if they moved saying we can help their most their neediest employees, then I think we we carry on forward and we're and we see if we can get the rest of the details sorted out because you know we have withholding taxes we have to decide who's going to be in the thing it's still it's still a bit of a work still a bit of work but probably useful work if we can keep 100 employees in, you know in, in, in secure housing so just as a crazy out of the box idea if we can't do that and the union will bargain it can we donate that money to Nantucket Food, Fuel, and Rental Assistance exactly and then communicate to employees that they have the option to apply for rental assistance? Um, that, that wouldn't would have... be targeted to town employees, but they would just um, have access I'd, to it? I'd want to talk a little bit to Brian about that. It would be a grant, so right. we would have to get some level of service out of that. Yeah. Um, and I, I just would want to talk to him about what town meeting approved and that. Just as an alternate way to mm -hmm. use the million dollars this time around mm -hmm. and then call it a day or divert it to development of housing on Tacoma Way. 
okay. would be my other option. So the so it sounds like the idea here will be one more meeting. If we don't get anywhere, then we need to find an alternative um, use of the funds that would be appropriate and legal. Yeah, good. Yeah. Work for everybody? Yep. Yes. Okay. Already got that. Yep. You want the card just for Donald? Sure. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> short term rental work group formed at the 2022 annual town meeting for articles 40 and 41. Someone put a red dot on this. That was me too. Okay. I wanted to have a discussion about it because Good. I think it's taking up way too, it's making way too much noise and taking away from too many other things. And one of the things that I was thinking about when you ask what we want to be known for, what I do not want to be known for as a board are the people that made Nantucket an even more elitist community unintentionally. Mm -hmm. Um, and that with every proposal that I have seen to combat this issue, I think the unintended flip side of it is that you make it easier for the people with more means and not the people with less um, to have a, a more exclusive community. Um, I do think it's a valuable conversation. I do think it's something that we need to continue talking about even the people within the short-term rental work group right now are completely banging their head against the wall um, trying to figure this out. And I just, with all of the other stuff that we have going on, I think it's fine to let the community continue to have this discussion and help facilitate it, but we're spending too many resources on it. So for, I think, an absolute lose, losing battle and, if we win, I worry that we will end up with something that's going to have more unintended consequences than we bargained for. Okay. But that's that's my piece, and I just wanted to say it. I don't think anyone else is going to agree with me. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, obviously, these working groups exist, right? And so uh, one of the questions becomes, well, what's the town's role and obligation when a work group is formed? Do you need to spend staff resources on supporting the working group? And uh, Libby, do you want to speak to this? Well, um, I mean, I guess that is a board decision. Right now, there is a planning staffer who's assisting with minutes, scheduling meetings, and being some, somewhat of a resource. We have engaged a vendor to help gather data, but also to help implement the short-term rental registration program that is contained within regulations already adopted. Um, the work group uh, has a facilitator that town staff spent some time locating. And now I guess I'm just going to come out and say the work group is functioning in a uh, um, high maintenance kind of a way. And and over the last couple of weeks, I'm finding myself starting to have to pay more attention to it. And I don't know that I have a great sense from the board as a whole as to what direction um, we're going in with this. But, yeah. but, that, but as far as staff time goes, it takes time. It, it's, ta it's looking like it's starting to take more time. And I also know people said this dealing with short term rentals is something you wanted to maybe deal with. And so I want the board to kind of chime in on this. You know, do you want to be spending time on it? Do you, are you aware of how much time it's taking? Is that okay with you? Or do you want to back off like Don is suggesting, see if the community can work it out, but not support it? Brooke. No. We absolutely cannot back off. No. A coordinated effort to, to, to come to some plan forward on short term rentals. That was attempted two years in a row at town meeting. And I mean, I guess we could just go to another free for all at town meeting and see what happens, but we're halfway in with a closed citizen warrant article deadline. It would not be fair to people who have held back to await the outcome of this work group that might have put articles in before November 14th. That would be, pulling a rug out from under people who invested are invested in, in, in this effort that's underway. I think that we absolutely need to continue this. No one thought it was going to be without contention or difficulty. 
it is clearly one of the most fear-inducing issues that I've seen come up in my time on, you know, living here year-round, and it needs to have come to some conclusion that's not a free-for-all. I agree completely that we have to keep going. It's really messy, and it, I mean, not our own time of getting constant emails from people about this issue. We have to go through with it. If they come through something, a recommendation we don't like, we don't have to approve it. Period. We're not obligated to their to whatever they recommend. Jason, you want to make any comment? Yeah, I think I'm with the last two comments. Like we're already halfway through it. We can't unpregnant ourselves. Like we have to see it through. Okay. I think we can be more, we try to be more efficient and try to make decisions quicker so it doesn't take more staff time. I think if we all knew the outcome was what you suggested, Don, we would all either stop it or try to make sure that. We don't become more elitist for whatever regulations or whatever we would put in, but it's not guaranteed that that's what's going to happen. So I we wouldn't want to take it off. Like we maybe need to um, not speed it up because we just extended it to a, a special town meeting. But I think it's to to give them time. But maybe we can uh, mold it and not mold it because we want to stay out of it. Like we created this group and then. We're out of it. How do we come in to make sure it's still efficient when needed? Uh, so, and then go ahead. I mean, that's, I, <laughs> I'm not suggesting that the work group be disbanded. Right. I'm yeah. suggesting that it not be Libby's priority. Gotcha. I don't, I think it is taking up too. It's one of those issues that became such a hot button topic mm -hmm. with nobody really having a true answer to it and lots of, lots of noise and misinformation. They need to get the proper data and they need to just continue their work. And when they're done, then we will evaluate it. I think until that point, it just runs its course and it not be a high priority on our end. But so, if it goes off the rails, then, then it's going to fall on Libby, right? It's going to fall on Libby, if, you know, if we haven't paid any attention to it and goes no. off the rails. I no. just, okay. I All think right. it's the board's responsibility if it goes off the rails. I mean, mm -hmm. poor Libby gets all the flack. You know, and the rest of us kind of it gets diluted. We only get twenty percent of the plaque. She gets a hundred percent of it. So, so I think if it goes off the rails, it's our responsibility to get it back on. I mean, I think it's already off the rails, frankly. Well, let me test this statement then: that the town has provided to date the su appropriate support for the working group, and additional staff resources should not be allocated. Libby should not spend her time on this, and we know that it will continue and might require board intervention at some point. So, so I'm going to create an alternative suggestion that we request more updates from the facilitator to directly to the board, more frequent updates, so we can monitor what's going on from the facilitator's perspective. And I believe that building consensus requires diving into the chaos before you can find common ground. And I think people are highly uncomfortable with the process of consensus building and it's freaking people out because they're not getting to the answer they want to get to, but that is the process. And I think we as a board can outwardly advocate for that really messy and uncomfortable process and, and let people know that, that that's how you live into consensus building and decision making. So your suggestion might be a way of the board being more involved, but I want I do want to kind of test this. Okay, well what's the messaging to Libby and the and the staff that the board is saying? And 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 you might not agree with the statement that I made, but I just want to I want to test that and see that's what Don was saying. It seemed like that's what Malcolm was saying. Add it to the agenda once a month and let so us be the get an update to the contract. board. And when they call Libby and say it's off the rails, um, she says, well, I'll look forward to your update at our next meeting. I think every two weeks after their meetings, that we get a brief okay. update. After every one of yeah. their meetings, we get a progress update. Well, I could also suggest you become the facilitator. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at a, on a Wednesday night? <clears throat> every two weeks on a Wednesday night? I, I think we need to to so. You think it's too much? I think once a month. Okay. I think it's too much to ask of a faci the facilitator. We're paying her. the The reason <laughs> for it is that 
the reason I'm saying this is this is the, the, there's a lot of noise, but there's always a lot of people who are not being noisy, who who are listening to the noise and wondering what's going on. So I think a five minute update, whether it's a written statement that we read from the facilitator, I don't think she has to come about what they're doing. I, I just think that that having communication to the people who aren't part of the noise making helps quell their concern of the noise that's being made. Uh, and, and just reiterating our commitment to what is an uncomfortable and messy process. So it stays, we don't want Libby to get into the swirl. You all will get monthly updates. Does that work, Don? It, it that works for me. No, I just I just yeah. I have not liked how it's been overshadowing yeah. so many okay. other efforts. And Jason, it, yes, monthly and supplemental meetings and every, every two weeks we need some more. quick synopsis it's through an email. That's fine. Okay. That, I've been trying to watch them, but they're three four hours long. Right. And I can't keep up. Well, we delegate. And, and you know, is that good for you? It's good um, for you. Are you concerned about any? No, I'm not overly concerned about it. But I've already started by being contacted and seeing what is happening so you all saw something from me yesterday about um members who are kind of going off the uh they're frustrated, group. They're, they're frustrated. and so they're reaching out to board members and um i think my uh approach would be which was my approach yesterday um what what what's going on with the facilitator? And I'd be happy to tell her we want to get a once a month update. I'm mm -hmm. sure she would be happy too. And then, in the interim, if there are um, inquiries from work group members or others about what is going on, we say we'll talk about that at the next uh, board update. So, okay. so the other piece of this that's really important is Jason said we committed to a special town meeting in the fall. That's not what people are talking about, and that's not what the facil facilitator is still asking about deadlines for Springtown meeting. I think we need to make a statement about the timeline mm -hmm. expectation, and we need to have a strategy around how to address the citizen warrant articles that have already been filed for this town meeting. And our messaging should be, we, we, we do not support any warrant articles related to short-term rentals at Springtown meeting because we support the process that we'll be producing a proposal for a special town meeting in the fall. And we just rinse and repeat that message. And I don't think anything's gonna get two thirds at town meeting if we're consistent in that messaging and that we want this process to play out as again, as messily as it is, we wanna give it time. And clearly spring town meeting is not enough time because the data is not clear enough. You know, there's a whole lot of reasons not to, not to push for spring. And we need to make that commitment, get off the fence on it. So we didn't make that commitment the other time? No, I thought we did. Well, I think we, we did, kind of did, we did, did, but we didn't. You, you most recently, um, at one meeting, you said, yes, we want to think uh -huh. it through and not rush through it. But then at a subsequent meeting, um, the general uh, discussion was, we need to keep thinking about this. So yeah, it's, it's not... Yeah, yeah, because, because it says it's more. Yeah. That's right. So I think we need to crap, we need to come to an agreement on what our position is on timeline and the citizen warrant articles and okay. go with it. Well, a key issue that's come to light is that they don't have the data. Right. They don't even remotely have the data yet. They didn't go to any of the local real estate firms or to NARAB to get the data. So and so, they that's, boiled so, down data from things like VRBO that's not even accurate. So um, just to clarify who they is, it's it's our vendor, Granicus. Now, their primary purpose was to set up the short-term rental registration program. Another part of their scope was to get the data and mine the um, online platforms that have rentals. And, and I guess, I, I don't really know because I wasn't directly involved, but I guess the general understanding from staff was they would automatically mine the local real estate agencies, but evidently they did not. So that does remain to be done. Um, and hopefully that isn't going to take some classes. But yeah, that, that's my understanding. Well, and, and the other thing is we're going to have a registry in January. So we're going to be yeah. producing our own data, right? which is another reason to but push it down. I mean, frankly, uh, it's probably going to take a year of that data to have data. Mm -hmm. But so that's a 
problem if we're pushing it's a major problem it's totally inexcusable i mean this started last may and I, i'm just very frustrated at it all right well, I'll, it's gonna, i'm not gonna it's gonna stay on it sounds like it's we're gonna try to manage the the, the libby time but it's gonna retire, require focus of the board and stays and no one put a green dot on it just to kind of point that out also it's nobody's top priority here but it definitely stays on the list okay Quick question. Yes, please. On the million dollar subsidy card that you yes, handed over there. I did very dramatically. It was quite was good. Yes, I wish I got that yeah. picture. Um, are we sure that that one's off the board? Because I thought what I heard was one more meeting, have the one meeting. More, yeah. No, but then I thought I heard, and can we then use it for something else? Correct. So it yeah. feels yeah. to me like we're still, we're just, it's not off. It's, it's not, not it's off. Not off. <clears throat> and it still requires staff time. It's somewhere there. Yeah. It's, it's we it out. Out. put it up. The one that didn't we want you to think you took down more than yeah, half it, did. <laughs> it tore it morphs into something else. All right, right, yeah, but it's, it's, it's definitely it limiting the effort, is what we're you know, yes. let's mm -hmm. let's stop spinning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's housing. Um, I have not given you all a break, it's almost 11. Do you need a break? You want to keep pushing mm -hmm. and take care of your own needs? We'll just do that. All right, so we've got two red dots on downtown parking management system. Select board evaluate paid parking regulations with paid parking program implementation. What is I put it out there? I did too. For yeah. um, it was the select board part. Okay. For us evaluating that, we're not we're going to spin our wheels on that, and I think not even be efficient if the if the um, parking commission and someone gets hired and they do it. Fine, but I don't, I don't think. Don't bring it to the board. Well, I think in a way it's going to create more work for town staff to be able to walk us through it. Okay. Somebody else stop. Yeah, it. it's I mean, it's a major shift to implement a paid parking system. And I just with everything else that we have, I don't find it to be a top priority. Okay. I think that it's going to be it's going to be a massive community effort. There's a lot of people against it. There's a lot of people for it. And I just I, I think timing wise, let the park, let the parking commission get established on its course. And I oh. just think that that's a little bit down the road. Let yeah, me so have that sound I think to you in terms of any implications of saying let's not focus on this right now. Um, I thought we were already doing that. So yeah. um, <laughs> okay, uh, pausing on uh, paid parking. I had my uh, until the commission okay. yeah. gets formed and starts. All right, so developing. we're gonna pause on this until the commission is formed and they deal with it. Yeah, and, and the way I would phrase it is the commission will figure out where we are. Yeah, and that will drive where we need to be. And um, again, like Don said, there's just so many other things that are more crisis than whether we have paid parking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fine. I don't know if I'm going to give it to Catherine or not. I'm not sure it's it's there until, but you're not, we're not focusing on it. Julie, could you give Matt B? Hi, Matt. Yes, let me tell you where we are. Yeah, we can what see we um, so what we did was we have up here on the wall all of the activities that are in the strategic planning update that you received that are either ongoing. Um, or excuse me, operationalized, they're part of the daily work of the town, or they're in progress in some way. And then um, these yellow cards are emerging issues that weren't part of the last update to the strategic plan, but have come along. The um, board then came up and put red dots on things that this isn't where they want staff really spending time right now. And so we're kind of going through those. And then the green dots are the things that are their top priorities right now. Um, we had a conversation about, um, there is one item I think that we pulled off from in the housing area, Catherine. Uh, evaluation of programs like Bales Indeed and other programs. Yeah, and so the research of other housing programs, it just wasn't producing enough fruit for staff to spend their time on it. And then the, the million dollar subsidy pilot program, um, we kind of identified two steps. One is there's a collective bargaining meeting in a couple of weeks. If there's no ability to get this to the employees who most need it, then they're going to look at are there other alternatives to make a grant of these funds to get them to people who have higher needs than just giving everybody a check. So that's kind of where we are. And so we're just walking through the red ones and then we'll go through the green ones. 
Okay. I'll, I'll, keep, I'll listen. I'm going to go look at it when you're doing it. That's fine. That's yeah. perfectly fine. All right. So this next red one is on is a, a sidewalk route. This is the sidewalk route connection from Mid Island to the ferries. Create Casa Springs pedestrian loop with the land bank. A couple people. Yeah, I think we. Somebody asked. I think you asked. Was it was this something that takes a lot of Libby's time? She said no. But I just think that I don't. I try to put something red on something that I want to try to give up. Yeah. I think we all should do. And that I want to see this is going to be unbelievable, but it's a, to me, it's a 10 to 20 year project. We don't need to put any time in the building. Definitely. Not right now. I agree. Okay. I'm, not, I'm just saying there's two things on here, right? So one is the sidewalk from the, you know, ferries from mid Island. And the other is the Kansu Springs thing, right? Well, I don't know if they're linked or not. So I just want to make sure you're getting rid of yeah. both. No, no, just the specific here, I think. Oh, I see. The, oh, so many, just the I got just you. Just the Constitution. Yes, it's just okay. that specific activity. There's several side route connections from Mid Island to Paris. Okay. But it's just this one. It's the hardest piece, and the and to me, so much longer term. This should not yeah. be an immediate priority. So again, I'm just going to kind of put it at the bottom. It's we want to do it someday, but today is not that day. Does that work for everybody, Libby? Yep. You're good with that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, then I'm going to move over to solid waste and plastic ban bylaw. I, I put that there, and I have to reiterate that everything I put red on, they are important. <laughs> and I, I, we, maybe we don't spend a lot of time on that anymore, but maybe we do. And I think other this is where I think the partnerships that we can slowly hand off to other nonprofits and other people to take the, to take the outreach part of it versus our limited resources. Like we don't have an outreach department. It'd be great if we had six people that worked for all the departments to get all the outreach for every new article that came out, but we don't. So I know some departments have their own, their own outreach. So that one, I just thought if we are putting a lot of time into a staff time, mm -hmm. Let, let's take take it off and try to outsource it and partner with. So, so what is the plastic? How what is the plastic ban defined as? It's a bylaw that was adopted in 2020, and it bans certain types of plastics like um, six pack yolks and certain types of plastic oh, bottles, versus, water bottles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, versus, yeah, basically. Okay. And most recently, nip bottles was added to it. So I would say we're not spending a lot of time right now on the plastic span. Nip bottles isn't going to need some attention because it's brand new. Um, we did kind of partner with Remain early on, and we tried to bring in the land council and some other groups to help with outreach, and they they were helpful. Um, but I, I would say we're not. This is not a top priority anyway right now. Now, what is an associated um, connect the emerging issue is the idea or initiative or necessity that we need to reduce our waste that is going to the solid waste facility. And that involved, as you might recall, earlier in the summer, a regulation that was more um, geared towards eliminating takeout container types of plastics and, and things like that and getting clarity on what is and isn't allowed. And we had um, some people call in and express concern about that. And we had not done a huge amount of outreach on it. And so that may have been one of the things that we said that helped us with our communications discussion. We need to get more on top of these things before they go to the board. So, um, however, is that a giant necessity this moment? Probably not. We definitely need more resources like a recycling coordinator and a solid waste manager to help with this. And so I'm not, but we're not spending a ton of time on it. So, so the other thing about all of this stuff in, in solid waste management that I've learned being on the work group is that the way we manage solid waste, waste from 2025 on, mm -hmm could completely upend. We would we could be mm -hmm. better off with plastic containers because we have a way to process them 
starting in 2026 or 2027 mm -hmm. through pyrolysis, right? So, so we're as we look into what is the future of solid waste management, mm -hmm. these decisions we're making and, and changing the waste stream today may become irrelevant in two years. And so that's why I'm thinking, you know, what is the point, right? And what, what do we do? We replace plastics with paper with PFAS in them. So that seem more environmental, but actually are more damaging in the long run than plastics that we can ship off and, and recycle. So I just think like this piecemeal, and I realize some of this is citizen war article driven. So we have to be careful about but the communication really should be about how did these little pieces fall into the bigger picture of solid waste management for the community. And then the nip bottles, right? If they're not allowed to be sold and you can't buy liquor on the internet, it, it other than people bringing them in their cars on the ferry or in their bags, there's really not a lot we need to do. It's different from plastic water bottles, right? Where That's people true. can order yeah. it from Amazon. You can't order nip bottle booze from Amazon. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take care of itself with enforcement on the retail sales end. Good point. Right? Yep. So, so no big deal about deprioritizing this in part because it sounds like there's not a staff person that can do it anyways Correct. right now. It's a vacancy. Mm -hmm. And it's just a little priority. Mm -hmm. Agreement on that. Mm -hmm. Kind of moving down. A couple more reds. Um, let's do this one that has uh, three people for the red dot on it. Um, it's under invested technology at public Wi-Fi across the island, except Great Point to not a priority. Not a priority. Mm. Okay. Libby, any concerns about deprioritizing that, taking it off the list? Um, no, we. Um, I don't know that we we ha we have spent some amount of time on it so far, but it would be better to be able to focus on downtown. Okay. Then there's two others that get closer. So at public Wi-Fi within one mile of Pacific National Bank. I just think it's a convenience, not a necessity. And if we, with all the other priorities, we have public Wi-Fi. I mean, I'd love to have public Wi-Fi, but it's, in terms of the list of priorities, it just felt to okay. me like... Okay. Um, the other one, and, I, and I've seen kind of not on the same page, how are others here to yeah. take it off? It's, it's yeah. be nice to have, but I wouldn't want to see Libby waste your time on it. Okay, and Most then uh, Surfside and Jay's Beach. Same? Same thing. Go to the beach, have fun, leave your devices home. <laughs> yeah, I mean. What an idea. If you need to work, stay at your rental house. Yeah. Okay. Um, you're not really going to see people sitting on the beach with a laptop. You can't see it, right? No, I, I think part of this stemmed out of um, Instagram posts, yeah. safety and emergencies. That come up. Are people going to not come visit Nantucket because we don't have Wi-Fi on the beach? I doubt it. No. No, well, if there's a, if it's a public safety thing, like if at Cisco the lifeguards can't call an ambulance, then that's a difference. That's that's a different. So yeah, that's a public Wi-Fi. That's for town operations. Yeah, you yeah. need something for town operations. That should actually you do it. Private Wi-Fi right. anyway. But then, so but not public. Okay, we have disposed of or discussed the red dot items. Um, let's go back and hit the greens. So what I asked people to do here was say, what are your top three priorities? What are the three things you really want to see happen? The first one is um, on the motorized bikes and scooters. Um, somebody put a green dot on that. I, I did that just because I I feel like it's a, it is a new hot button topic. There's more and more of these things everywhere. And they I think it's a priority for people to be riding them and not driving cars. Mm -hmm. Well, but I'm afraid it. someone's going to die. Yeah, so it's the, <laughs> and um, yeah. so I just I, I just think that we don't need to spend tons of time on it. So I'm sure there are many other people throughout the state working on it, but we just need to kind of understand what our options are. Other comments on this or Libby, kind of how do you interpret that or concerns about that? Um, that that just needs some um, some additional resources to 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 get at with a, a public outreach program, I think. We, we are getting a lot of complaints about e-bikes and scooters that are going too fast on the bike path. It's the way our bylaws written is a little confusing about whether or not 
scooters, for example, are even allowed. Um, some sort of weird language in there. So I have been talking with town council a little bit about how to either clear that up or um, are there regulations that might be able to be implemented that we, I've heard the suggestion that we establish speed limits on the bike path, um, which which is a is something to discuss, but I don't think we're gonna have signs all over the bike path. We already have complaints that people have sign fatigue and there's too many signs as it is on bike path. So um, also I think it's probably a little hard to enforce that. So, the focus here is on education. Don just says safety. it's an emergency issue that's hot and we need to be on top of it. Libby says they're kind of on top of it. They're doing the best. Anybody else? Yes. So the only thing is to clarify in the bylaw what's legal and what isn't legal. I think it's unclear. And I think that's a short-term project that can be done in concert with what's been done at the state level. And then there's guidance mm -hmm. for appropriate behavior and outreach. Even if we create speed limits, we can't enforce it. We don't enforce, <laughs> we, we don't have the resources to enforce bike stopping at important stop signs either. I wish we did, but we don't. So I think just. Okay. Yeah, but we may, but you may, you don't have to do it every day or every hour. We may, like if, if it comes out of BPAC and we have X amount of recommendations that, that you know, town says, yeah, we'll, we'll enforce occasionally, et cetera, to set the right tone. Then I think we could do that. Yeah, I mean, you could set a CSO at the corner of Bartlett Road and Surfside Road two hours once a week for three weeks in the beginning of the summer, and you would send a loud message to people that this matters to us um, and issue warnings. And you I know, mean, but again, in the context of everything else, we need to do is that important? Okay. <clears throat> Anybody else on this one? Um, solid waste, MRF composter transfer station, new facilities, phase one, landfill, phase two, and three. I put that there. I was looking for something that, that I wanted to put them on, on, on all solid waste mm -hmm. because um, just what points that Brooke brought up, we've been, we know this is coming. It's going to be, it already is a huge issue and it's going to be more and, and if there's proper planning then we could divert a disaster down the road. So I didn't really know exactly which one to, to put it on. So that was the most extensive one. So solid waste is a big issue. There's a staffing deficit here right now that we acknowledge. What is what are what does it mean to you, Libby, to know that this is you know something that the board is very focused on? And well, we've already Felt the board is very focused on it. And we know that 2025 is rapidly approaching and we meet about once a month um, with our group. George is integral to the process, especially since we don't have someone who's, you know, basically the point of contact. It's primarily me and him. Really. And um, I'm trying to drag Rick into it. And um, it, it's, it's already a, a pretty growingly major focus of time. Yeah. Right, well, these, these, yeah. these green dots aren't for us. We want to put more time on them. Right. It's just like we want, really want to keep this yep. and shine a light on it even more or the same. Yep, Is that what? exactly. Okay. Yeah, I would have put a green dot on that one because it's it's going to be here before we know it. Yeah. yeah but I'm, yeah, we're, so we're not saying we want to do this is there's a lack of effort there. Right. The time. Right. Okay. Just keep it focused. Keep it focused. Yeah. Yeah. We've got several under water quality management. The first one is identify management strategies to reduce the controllable load of nutrients into surface water bodies. Fertilizer. Fertilizer. I put that on there. I think we just have to push more of what we're already doing. Same thing, it's a priority. I was just going to say that um, it's definitely a top priority uh, among the relevant town staff and yeah. the board most recently agreed to put in a warrant article, a, a resubmittal of a motion that it developed last year for um, regulating fertilizer. And once we have heard from Jeff about 
his plan, some of this might be a little bit more clear. Mm -hmm. I just need to get it on an agenda with him. Yeah. And I think I'll move to the next one, which is finalize and implement an island-wide long-term water quality management plan that addresses ponds, harbors, and stormwater and wastewater with public outreach and specific ways or methods to measure improvement. So it's like the dot above it. Okay. It's kind of a merge of it's the same going. Okay. It's the same car. And there's uh, a new group on the island working at independent nonprofit group looking at water quality and have recommendations and we should pay attention to them. Okay. Any other comment from anybody else for the No. Okay. Develop stormwater enterprise operations separate from public works to enhance focus on stormwater mitigation. It's a couple of people put dots here. So, and that's yeah, that was me. Okay. Yeah, me, too. me too. Okay. So, this is something that you're interested in seeing pursued. That's, that's a big, big, big deal. It is big, but I like the way you described the above ground, underground. Mm -hmm. it makes sense. It's, you know, I don't know all these things I keep thinking we know the capacity for. I almost said during the water quality, I didn't put any green things on having a, a great master plan because we can't implement it. We can't enforce it. We don't have the staff to do anything. That's across the board. Yeah. But the creation- to me, that's a priority. We should maybe put some more red dots up there, but we will, mm -hmm. we will see. And the creation of the enterprise funds creates the funds yes. to fund the staff to get the work done, right? Or can the can well, enterprise funds be used um, for the staff? Yes and no. Yes, it can be used for staff, but but the creation of the fund doesn't automatically create revenue. Right. We we need to either develop a revenue stream <laughs> or divert something from the general fund into the stormwater fund. Like I mean, technically, an enterprise fund funds itself. It doesn't get funded from taxpayers. Yeah. However, in our situation, we have at least two enterprise funds that are supplemented by the general fund because they don't generate enough revenue to support themselves the island home and solid waste so until we were are if, if ever able to have sufficient stormwater related revenue that is generated from fees um it's going to come from the general fund so it's part with part of setting up a separate enterprise to evaluate the fee structure yeah that 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 will ultimately become part of this. Okay. It, to me, it's step one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just a comment on capacity. Yeah. Not, what I would say, the, the capacity of us to do things, I think the top priority is housing and everything else, housing town employees so that we can attract and retain them. And that should be number one, like a mile above every other thing here. Because if we don't do that, we will not be able to do any of this other stuff. And people don't don't want to hear, well, we can't get to that because we don't have staff. You know, that that we aren't doing our job. If we, you know, if if we can't do our job because we don't have staff, they don't want to hear that. You know, they called up and order a sandwich. They want their sandwich. You know, that's that's my business. They call up, they want the road clean, you know, they want the the, the lawn mowed. So I, you know, or they want clean water or whatever. I think that we have to figure housing has to be number one, two, and three, in my opinion. And I know you've probably got it dotted over there. Well, I mean, housing is all here, and it's certainly there's a lot about it. There's one that's over here that I is interesting is really about hiring and retention efforts. And I, I think that's where housing becomes a strategy for hiring and retaining town employees. Right. But I mean, it's but we have we have land. You know, we need to find a way to house town employees, period, and house them in really nice houses that I would want to live in, my employees want to live in, and we need to put it around the island in places that we already have. And it should be it should be our top number one priority. If we ever want to solve any of this, this other stuff, it isn't going to happen. You know, it isn't going to happen without places for people to live. So that's, you know, I, I think a lot of this, I, we don't, I don't even need to talk about, I don't mean to be flipping about it, but. And, and I just say, no one put a free dot on ha any housing. Right? It's presumed that it's the number one priority. Okay, my that's it, okay. My green, so dot on, my green dot is on it. <laughs> and it, and it should be on town employee. How we, town. as a town, have a responsibility to house our own employees so that we can actually do our job. Yeah, I, I would agree that. 
I could have put all three of my child's all on housing, but then yeah. I didn't want to no. not. Yeah. I think that's why we didn't put housing because I think it's out of all the different strategic plan goals, we've made the most groundwork on housing. Um, okay. We actually took a couple of things off housing that we know are working yes. so that we can focus on the other. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to develop a facilities master plan. And, and I, is that connected to this work yeah. from your own yeah. perspective, which is we really need to emphasize and focus on outreach efforts for the Warner and Fuller Town meeting? We need to stop pouring money down the drain of old buildings. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And we need to persuade the community that that's a smart fiscal decision, and a good investment. And the same place. That hand red one is a two fairgrounds. Okay. Yeah. And then the last one is retiring the retention efforts in the new economy and immense challenges of competing with on island businesses and off island communities for qualified applicants. So this is under Mission Town Operations, as you know, this is the key is the staff. So um last one is one that's been operationalized but um expand human services offerings related to behavioral health and supporting supporting vulnerable populations so this is one libby mentioned a new position was hired this is the focus of that staff of staff effort right now and so the green dot is just emphasizing the importance of this is that yours no i i, I did i put the green dot so which one was it? Behavioral health. Behavioral. Oh yeah, that's that's mine. That's yeah. Your, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I and, and I said it at the beginning, and yeah. I concur okay. that 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 the scope, the long term, the scope needs to go beyond beyond behavioral health. It's uh -huh. a it's a bigger picture thing, but um, I think just making sure that the director of human services is engaged in the in the conversations that are happening in the community around this. Uh, I would say within the behavioral health initiative that's been going on for about a year and a half, two years, uh, Jericho, first for Barrett, but now Jericho is involved. And it is very important that he's there and that yeah. the, the town is there and playing a part. So I, just, I didn't want to see that go away. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so we took like four things off, right? So we're down to like five. <laughs> um, and, that, and it's, a good, it's a good start. It's a good conversation. I, I, I want to give Libby a chance um, and maybe to confer with some of her staff. And I'm not going to let her say all 50 come off, but I want her to, I want, if there was something that you felt like this is just the effort that's being required is not worth the potential output being received. Is there something up here that you would want you and or your staff to stop spending time on? What would it be? So I'll give you a minute. If you want yeah, to I think um, we, we they can huddle. Give them a, we'll give them a huddle. You guys get some coffee or a treat. Is there things that, that aren't up there that we could add that we want to take off? <laughs> yeah, that's it. it. You get that, No, like things that additional towns that we're spending a ton of time on. Oh, that we want to. Yeah. We've already addressed it in the beginning of the meeting. Yeah. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Scott, Scott. Put them on to take them off. Like, well, yeah. it's not up there, but it's got four letters. It's out of Scott's off, right? Oh, right. I know that for a while it's taken around 40, 50 percent of Libby's time. Yeah. These are done equity. I mean, yeah. Vince, Vince I, yeah. made, that made sense. That was it's what he I would love for us to set some sort of deadline. I, I don't know. I mean, crazy. So like, how is like, that not up there as an emerging issue or something? Like, because it's not emerging. It's been around for 20 years. Oh, oh. And I don't know. I, I'm not saying that we just. You stop doing it, but I think it says it needs to be up there when and the time offered by the staff. Yeah. She could always give it to somebody else, but then that's taken away from the environment from all that. Yeah. Is that an environmental one? Yeah, it's there's nothing up there about coastal resiliency. Well, that's what I was gonna say coastal resiliency and operationalized. That that should ask they they ask for us to put their the coastal resiliency would like us to put their the short term that came out, the short term goals that came out of that, uh, that should be up and in our in there. And but they're dealing with it mostly, and we've got Vince. But well, you don't think it should be in there? I I, don't, I mean I think coastal resiliency is a good thing to be planning for and thinking about, but I don't think it goes on our top five, top top ten. I mean I think they're doing a good job of keeping the ball moving forward, but in terms of where we're spending resources. 
Yeah, yeah the reality though is you have to spend the resources. Look at HTC. If we ignore it, it's just going to keep roiling and coming back. So we don't man. So we don't manage situations. You know, we don't manage situations, and we and they get worse and worse and worse. Yeah, but we should to your to, to your exact point. If we have a fixed kind of resources, where do we want to spend it? Housing, town employees, staff retention. Coastal resilience is not a tomorrow problem. It's a longer term problem. Not that we shouldn't be cognizant of it and thinking about planning for it, but in terms of investing huge amounts of staff time and resources today, I just... I, I just don't think it rises to the level of some of other stuff. Well, but geotubes is like short term, it's something we need to just deal with. We need to figure a drop dead date and, and the hell with the consequences of like, you know, we can't figure this out if it doesn't get resolved. I don't know. I mean, I know if it's it doesn't not get resolved, resolved if it get, if, if let's for argument's sake, say we took it out the beginning of December. All that would happen is we would be spending more time on it. I know. And and know. so all that would happen is it would become more an issue. It would be a lot by lot issue. But, and it would cost the town so much more time and money in legal fees and effort. Everything that would happen would just, it would be mind boggling. Yeah. I know. What would happen yeah. up there. And so you can't, so there's certain things you, you know, it'd be great to say, we don't have the staff. We can't do it, yeah. you know, and, 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 and duck it. But there's certain things we shouldn't be ducking. I, I, I know. And that's say something. that is a, is a wishful thinking. Honestly, I know it's wishful thinking. That, was, that, that somehow there's a way to say this has to conform. Well, does that help? Uh, I think the time that we spent on the last couple of years was partly because we weren't spending time on it. For a long time, so I get why we're here. Just an acknowledgement that sometimes it's 40 50 percent of the yeah. time. Well, so yeah, and I guess it's sort of, I mean, there's now there's a path, right? NOI has been filed, there's going to be a decision out of CONCOM, and then we'll. I mean, you did tell you to answer the whole this board as a whole to a consensus yeah. and make a real decision with steps, right? Regardless of what the final outcome ends up being, you see a lot. Created a more movement than let's let's do this and study this for five years and, <laughs> well, and, and then let's there's... be indecisive and have three to two votes and i mean obviously that stuff's still gonna happen yeah. but you see it just a much clearer projection yeah well and it signals to the parties involved that we're committed to a direction this is the path we're committed to we're going to see how it, it plays out i'm not suggesting we back off from where we are. That's not at all what I'm saying, but. Um, well, that's similar to what I was saying about the short-term rental decision. Yeah. Don't back off, but yeah. don't let it go on. How much it. are we gonna get caught in the world? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Stay. Sorry, I stuck work. Yeah, yeah that's all right. Stay kind of on a path. Yeah. I, was, I have to be honest. You're it was. I, I could have said that at the beginning. Yeah, these kinds of big goods in a box. Call my name. Matt Morgan. Yeah, I've some cookies. Oh, is that you? If you don't, yeah, if you don't, if you don't take the cookies, I'm going to bring them to Joe Manning. I've got physical therapy at 12. <laughs> so I'll bring them to him for his kids, and then I'll come back. Your cookie dough, man, it's so good. With sometimes that we were certain weekends, we sometimes bakes easy. You know, we have a bad oven, and just, you can even yeah, your cookie dough is great. Do you do gingerbread dads? We don't. We're talking about doing it. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. If I buy your cookie dough, it never makes it to the oven. <laughs> well, there's that too. We oh, last week and we did uh, cranberry chocolate chip and put it in the store. Yeah, it was still so good. So basically, the, the chocolate dough. chip with some with cranberries with nice. bogs in it, and they're really good. I think on the housing part, we have to find a way. 
to make it happen. And we can't say, oh, well, the unions wouldn't accept it. We've got to find a way to say it has to be done, you know, like the period. You know, well, yeah. tell, fill in on the idea. It's the, the million dollars, if the unions and suspenders and everybody and like every ton of play gets a thousand bucks, it's it's completely useless. After. Yeah, doing that. I, I know. We know. It's, it's a best thing. Picture, I mean, it, this is not yeah. not a hidden thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that money oh, could yeah. be more effectively yeah. donated to like yeah. 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 rental assistance yeah. that will give it to at least community yeah. members that are truly yeah. needed. And it could be a town employee. Yeah. Um, or the money could just go back into be reappropriated for something like well, we develop the entire on the yeah. something yeah. more towards existing housing initiatives. Yeah. I just think that the idea that we have the ability to house them. Well, a blanket right. statement so that, so that we can do that. Right. Otherwise, we won't have any firemen, we won't have any teachers, we won't have any employees. You know, so, so we, I, we come to this in the behavioral health initiative. Yeah. That's all we could talk about because we don't have the people. Yeah. Yeah. So that's always there. And yeah. we dig into some other things that are equally as important, yeah. but it's, it's kind of always there. I mean, in terms of retention, when you were providing someone in employee housing, they're more likely to stay in jobs too. Yeah. Um, you're helping them in, in the double edged sword. In different ways. Sometimes they feel trapped and it's not yes. fair and it's a futile. Yeah. All the different things they say about it. But, you know, I and I get that. But at the same time, if you give people, you did really nice places, really nice townhouses, and really nice, you know, places for people that would really be psyched to live in. We should, this should have 30 in the place. So, yes. Yeah. Um, so, with three parking lot, could have six or eight units on the front. I mean, there's places like that. People love them. You're going to go in the fire station, the old fire station. The fire station. Yeah. yeah. All right. So the staff has been um, kind of taking a look at this, and she's going to explain why everything's on its side. So the things that we turn this way are things we are saying, please take these off. Things that are turned that way are complicated, <laughs> and they're, they're sort of, we're not sure we can take it off yet, but we still need to do some work on it. So, right, so we, go through the one you want to What we off. turn sideways is uh, incentives for year-round rentals. The, the Affordable Housing Trust is working with town council to develop a year-round restriction not tied to income this level necessarily and expand the condition through this trust concern. We feel other groups are doing That's it. the one I meant to have a red dot on. Okay. So, okay. Red. So are you all okay with that one coming off the town? Yeah. That's, That's the one okay. that made Tucker smile. Okay. 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 Let's give it to Catherine. She'll make sure we get the right one off. All right. And then yeah. this was similar. The creation of a community land trust is underway. We, we're not really spending any time on that anyway, and somebody else is handling that. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I think we just left it up there because in case we need to do anything to support it. Okay. Because didn't we talk about that earlier? Yeah, we did. I think we yeah. said that some staff might be involved. Yeah, down but we're not, we're not actively spending time on it. You're not driving it. We're not driving it. This is sort of similar creation of the community land trust for Nantucket. Again, same thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, ownership opportunities for middle income workers, work with developers on how existing homeowner project, home ownership projects that might otherwise go, et cetera. That I think is being handled already by the affordable housing trust potentially or um, the housing office, but town admin directly is not working on this. But town staff is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ten and Tucker. Okay. And I think that's part of like when we do like um partnership projects like with Richmond, we asked for additional restrictions that wouldn't have normally been in place. Okay, so housing office the housing trust is working on this. Mm -hmm. I am not working with that's just okay. saying we, we hope you're not all all 50 factors. I think it's a select board thing yeah. to keep in mind when we're asked to give things, we yeah. ask okay. for things like that. Yeah. Okay. So that can be on our like mm -hmm. policy as these things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um coastal plastics research. We have we don't have a recycling coordinator anymore that currently who's working on this, and I'm not even sure what the status of this is, so we're not working on it. So they're not working on it. How do you want to handle it? Do you want to take it off, or do you want to just understand that it's not a current priority because there's no one to do the work? What is this? Mm -hmm. most, there was, there was a, um, an effort to look at coast, coastal plastic trash. Microplastics. And I do we have the ability to ma manage that locally? No. no. 
was pretty yeah. happy with that. Second coordinator was working with others at right on this. Yeah. Grand Council and so, so this might be a good um, opportunity for um, third party water office to. Uh, there's another thing issue here. Uh, the NIP ban enforcement. We like what Brooke said about send a letter to the liquor stores and tell them Call when it's dead. happening and all of that. But it is kind of a I don't know what to do with it. I'll just it, it sounds like you still have something you're going to do. So you're yeah, we deal with yeah, it. that's right. we'll oh. actually put that there. It, but okay. it's minor. Um, expand and improve cell service across the island. We're not talking about that. Okay, that's fine. it's it's important. But is it hmm. is it such a gigantic project that whether well, whether it's fiber coming here or. It's something we have not even discussed unless we're talking about public Wi-Fi, which is a massive undertaking that we're not in a position to do right now. And also I'm sort of hearing it would be convenient, but is it a necessity? So why is that when yellow? Because that what yellow meant was it was operationalized. Well, I think that one of the things that's happened is from time to time the cell phone carriers install mm -hmm. additional antenna capacity that improves the cell service. Right. It is outside the jurisdiction of the town. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's happening and there and so, but it's not really driven by us. We get I, informed of it, right? Yes. More than have to grant permission for yes, it. There's a on top property. Yeah. And, yeah, that's what Karen would, explained. That is cellular providers. I would think that in some way falls under the new position of the sustainability person because I think that cell service is a safety concern now that so many people don't have landlines on the island. Okay. I just well, think it's something that we should obviously we don't put in the cell service, but I think it's something that we should have a handle on where okay. the holes are. So I don't know where to quite put it, but we're we have no one to activate the funds. We're trying to upgrade the fiber at the municipal fiber grant in order to lay a foundation, mm -hmm. which we're getting fought along the way to do that, but that's all we have. We're working <laughs> on it. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so is it about encouraging citizens to reach out to their cell yeah. provider and demand better service? Well, maybe. I mean, and it's not a problem limited. It's an anti hmm. So, so our IT department isn't, you know, banging down your door saying, Libby, our, our departments can't do their work because we don't have enough, we don't have the right connectivity, right? So, no one's, um, know, when it comes to efficient town it's operations, not operation. it's not hurting the, us. The cell service, no. The internet connections, yes, is an issue, but that is a, that is underway to get upgraded to all town. I kind of see all that. As together, but maybe they're very cells, separate. Cells, cells different from internet. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's not a town service. Right. So that's why it's kind of wonky that it's even there. Yeah. Okay. I think this originally yeah, may have come up during COVID or right off every time when people were doing so much work at home yeah. and they were finding connections to be sometimes maybe yeah. sketchy. Or in the summer when your calls get dropped all the time. Yeah. I, I really do see it connected. And maybe uh, tech, technology wise, it's not self service and then Wi Fi here. But if maybe it's an MPDC initiative down the road, uh, Mary Long and I were talking about how do we take this on? Because it, it's, it's, it's spot talk about mm -hmm. here and there. But if we wanted to grow our economy in more of a sustainable way, maybe have more people work here, live here year round, whether they're second homeowners or they become primary because they have really good access. I know from a business standpoint, it always is going in and out. And it's funny that you said this, I just got a text from my operations director said, I have to go home, we have no Wi-Fi here at work. <laughs> so it's just, that could, that could be us internally, but. Um, but Wi-Fi is different from cell service. He's saying Wi-Fi could also have economic development connection, though. You can make them separate. Well, that this card is cell. It I is. Understand. Yeah. And it's yellow. 
which means operationalized, which means there was something that you did. That's why I'm kind that of it was those. It was just those yeah. antennas. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, it was a single project that's done. Okay. okay. So the problems we have in the summer, it it's all gets you through the air. And the problem isn't here. The problem is in the switching stations on the Cape. There's we don't have there's not enough capacity for what we are demanding on this side. And so they, you know, they've tried to upgrade it, but it's millions of dollars, you know, to do it. And they've done a couple things, you know. And so when we get to the busiest weekends, the busiest times, we're trying to push too much through too small a uh, you know, connection there. So the question is, what can we do as a town to affect change in this arena? And I think that's where I'm coming from. I don't think there's really anything we can do other than advocacy to the providers to upgrade their... their, their send, it's, it's send a letter. Send a letter and right. vote it every year and send a letter. That's about... Yeah. You know, and give them, and give them, a, give, run them through the gamut every time they come and ask to do something. Right. Um, I'm going to say anyway. something that might be sort of unpopular, but when you live on an island, sometimes you can't get stuff. I, <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I would move on. This is <laughs> compared to other issues we have. You hit all of these, Libby. The one thing I want you to I want some conversation about is while you were taking things off, we added geotubes. And so there's all there was a conversation that happened around the geotubes thing. It's not a strategic plan item. Is it something you spend time on? Um, yes, I have spent quite a lot of time. On this. And it's it's a little bit um, in a way emerging because we're not quite sure how the uh, application to the Conservation Commission is going to pan out and whether or not ultimately the geotopes will have to be removed. And even if they do have to be removed, though, there's still going to have to be some amount of town involvement. And it could get very intense depending on what the outcome might be if they, if they are in fact removed. And we don't have uh, measures in place that will address access for those who might lose it. So there's there's really no, this is kind of a, almost a, there's no, not really a lot of getting around it. So it's something we work on, not part of the strategic plan, but it's just like it's an issue that part of day-to-day -day operations they, of the council yeah, you have to work on. Okay. Look, Any comment from the board on this? I was gonna say, as we were talking about it, it kind of went into coastal resiliency. So if you mm -hmm. scratch out geo tubes, coastal resiliency, yeah, it's been asked to be to be added to the strategic plan. This is just one major issue. Mm -hmm. I just when I try to think about where is lot most of your time go in the last year, this has been one of them. This so is, I just. This is but you you're 100 right. If we took it away, say we just said okay, we took it away, we throw up our hands, pull it out. You're going to spend <laughs> two or three times as much time as you're spending now. Yeah. Plus, it's going to cost the town millions and millions more dollars. And so it's it's one of those if we can if we ignore it, it'll just get worse and come back worse. So we have you have to, it unfortunately has to stay as much as no one wants to deal with it, you know. But yeah, I wasn't putting it up there to so try to take it off. The most no, resiliency need to be part of or meant uh, one of the goals or activities in the strategic plan. Is that what you're saying under environmental leadership? I just thought we should have a conversation. Yeah. Brooke. So so I'm good with with monitoring and planning. I mean, I think it's important to, to, and I think the Coastal Resilience Advisory Group is doing a lot of that. And I think Vince's position is, is already doing a lot of that. I just think in terms of execution, housing, if we're gonna invest staff time, if we need housing for town employees, we need a staff person to manage rental housing to step to town employees. That's a more bigger priority than figuring out how to build a seawall. Like that's a today problem. A seawall is a, I'm not saying we should stop talking or thinking or planning, but in terms of actual investment in execution of things, we should be hiring people and investing money in housing, housing for town employees and a housing system that works for our economy. To Matt's point. And, and yeah, coastal resilience is an existential threat, but who's threatened if nobody's living here because they can't have a place to live? So no, anyway. There, there are, we, with this one of the things, some of the things that, came, that bubbled up from the consensus building we did was Popus Road, 
you know, and fixing something that's an issue already, something automatic. If there are some small projects, there were about 50 of them that were identified. I think the Coastal Resiliency is got 20, 24 of them underway. And they actually, you know, that group is tracking and Vince are tracking what's being done and they're doing a good job of that. We need more of that, you know, in other parts of the parts of the government because it's actually, you know, but I hope that we don't, you know, I don't want to send the message that, oh, this can go to the side because then we'll be two or three years out with still that list. You know, I think it's important that we, you know, say, hey, this stuff is important because we, we need to be working on it. So when the time comes, we've got it under underway. I mean, that's, so anyway, it, it, and they've done a good job of, of getting, you know, applying for funds and learning why we didn't get the funds. So if we apply again, we're most likely going to get them. You know, there's things like that, that if we put it on hold, we'll be starting from scratch all over again. So. Libby, do you feel that post resiliency, the amount of time that you and your staff is putting toward to take out the geo groups mm -hmm. is, is appropriate and effective and doesn't need to go up or down or right now? Um, yes and no. <laughs> yes. However, um, as is typically the case in a place where there's a lot of committees and a lot of competing interests, I think the Coastal Resiliency Advisory Committee would like more focus on this mm -hmm. and we don't have that that staffing structure but they're looking at it from that one point of view and we are looking at the big picture mm -hmm. is that the most important thing we have already said housing is the most important one two three things so where does coastal resiliency fall under that i don't know if it's four but i kind of like what brooke was saying about um Keep it. It's it's definitely an issue for monitoring and tracking, but not necessarily not necessarily, um, you know, actively pushing things forward. We are working now to put all the coastal resiliency projects that are in the plan into the long term capital improvement plan, yeah. which is a task in and of itself. And never mind how we're going to fund all of that. But it, it, I would say, I mean, I don't know. From my point of view, it. It has a good amount of focus already. And it's going well compared. I always think like six years ago, uh, what focus do we have on it? Little. Yeah. And the, the idea too, I just remember like the, the strategic plan itself is a is a place for the board to identify top goals that need to be addressed today. Sometimes you'll do things that then become part of daily operations and you have staff that are working on coastal resiliency. It doesn't mean it's not important. It means this is a service or this is a business we're in. It's one of their tasks. And you have the, the special committee for any given function is always gonna want more, but it's understanding in the context of the board's priorities, how all these things fit together. So not everything the town does is you know, a, a piece of paper up here on the wall. And so I don't know that I mean, okay. coastal resiliency <clears throat> needs to be added as a new thing that's on the wall of the strategic plan, unless there's a, a new focus that you all are saying you need to take, because it's one of the things you funded a position for. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of operationalized yeah. already. Five years ago, how many people did you have doing these things? You know, yeah. sustainability, coastal resiliency. Yeah. It's all evolved in the last few years. But it, it'd be interesting if if Vince is moving over to sustainability coordinator and we're losing the coastal resiliency coordinator, and then we can't hire one. You know, we you know sort of we could be back to square one. A lot of this is driven by the individuals at the at the department level, and so I you know I think that is. Anyway, so I think that could you know that could end up being an issue for coastal resiliency if you know if Vince if Vince is still under if it's underneath him I think we'll still be doing well but if it can if if we step away from some of it or hire the wrong person because there's no one to hire you know or we hire the wrong we don't get one or we get the wrong one we could be struggling again. Can I suggest that we add it in this way to continue to monitor um, and plan for the needs, um, emerging needs around coastal resilience. Keep it really general and using the phrase continue because the work is already being done. So yeah, this, um, let me just say just from a like. I was just gonna say when we initially 
developed the strategic plan going back to like day one, mm -hmm. we decided to do something that was basically a three-year plan. Mm -hmm. And every year we would reevaluate and reprioritize okay. and, you know, continue out for the next three years. So as in terms of it being part of our three-year plan, I don't think that it really is, but it is a long range plan that we do have to stay on top of. Um, so I don't, I don't know exactly how that fits in. I think well, so this is wording a wording was generally good. But, but, yeah. I'm going to put a slide up for you all to see. Um, and, it, and, and I kind of want to, I want to speak to maybe what's going on here. So the plan itself, it, you know, yes, it was a, you know, kind of three to five year type of a plan that you'd evaluate every year, add things that some things would come off, merging issues you'd make space for. But any any time a goal is keep doing what you're doing, I'm not sure what the message is mm -hmm. because you keep plowing snow when you have it, you keep filling potholes, you keep paving roads. All of those things are very important to what you do. So yes, you have a person whose job it is to focus on these areas. They should keep doing their work. I don't know that that needs to be said in a strategic plan. What you want to make sure is that your commitment to environmental leadership is properly articulated. So the slide that she put up, it just kind of shows kind of how plans nest. So you'll see that strategic plan is right there in the middle, every you know three to five year type of a plan. The other plans that you have as an organization, you have a comprehensive plan that, you know, for the island and that's updated every certain number of years. CIP and master plans. This is where things like coastal resiliency, although it probably has a longer term um, time frame, your CIP plan, asset management plans, facilities plans, they have long reaching effects. The strategic plan, what is this board going to be focused on three to five years? Kind of how are we moving the needle towards ultimate vision of the city? You set priorities as new people come on and off. You set a budget, and then there's operational plans in the departments that they're working on things. But everything that you do is not part of the strategic plan. However, it connects, and that's the that's the piece. Is it you know that's why those statements are so important. And I would say if if I were taking a step back, and I know I've worked with you as we've kind of divin very divin dove very deep into all of the activities that are here, you know. In, in an ideal world, you, you really focus on those statements being, this is direction, this is the broad policy direction, you all set the goals, and then the organization identifies the activities that are gonna help accomplish them, and they bring those to you or they update them. And we've kind of gotten into this really mission mash of activities versus goals to a certain degree. And as kind of helping you all remember the big picture piece is something I think we could do, we could do better and, and maybe more of um, going forward. But we, we take you here in a certain way when you've got all these 55 things, but many of them are the strategies that the staff has identified to move the needle on the goal that you've set is important. Is that kind of context helpful? Yeah. So I think I think inclusion saying that we continue to support the coastal resiliency goals and et cetera is important to have in there. So people know that oh, the public knows it is there, but I don't think we have to get into the granular level on it. Statement. Do you have the, um, can you put the environmental leadership statement up? Yep. Natural resources. Yeah, okay. So the statement on environmental leadership, which she's going to put up on the board, reads, sustainability is how the town of Nantucket, with a focus on historic preservation, equity and inclusion, natural resources, hazard mitigation, solid waste management, energy, public health and education, institutionalizes practices in municipal operations that support a balance of the economic, environmental, and social health of our island. 
which meet the needs of current residents and visitors without compromising the ability of future generations to meet evolving, evolving needs. So coastal resilience is not spelled out in the statement. It is implied by natural resources and hazard mitigation. That's also the statement that's on the front of the plan. The sustainability statement, yes. Definitely implied. And so, you know, do you does it need to be spelled out in a different way? I mean, that's what I'm trying to figure out. You know, what what are you concerned about by not having coastal resiliency up here? Yes, it's something the organization spends time on. There are lots of things the organization spends time on that aren't in the strategic plan. <clears throat> I can go either. I'm wondering if there's a different statement for environmental leadership. And this somehow got cut and pasted there oh. from the front. Can we look back in the yeah. one? Yeah, okay. let's look. That would make more sense to me. Yeah, just have yeah. To no. that. that does part. Here we go. This reminds me of Rita, some of these words. I think. <laughs> yeah, she was here. When I think she was here for some of yeah. 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 the wordsmithing. That was a difficult sentence to help yes. us out. And it is one sentence that and is. I didn't love it, but I couldn't, I didn't have any other. Yeah, that's the, that is the overarching yeah. sustainability statement. Hold on, here we go. Oh, okay, here we go. <clears throat> All right, Nantucket residents and visitors share responsibility for the long-term sustainability of our beautiful island. We recognize our stewardship of the land, air, and water and work to ensure our community is resilient and self-sufficient. Other communities look to Nantucket to learn how to care for the national environment. It's definitely implied in the it's okay. So can we I, I'm not hundred percent sure where we are. I think I kind of made a case of I'm not sure it needs to be there. Do you want it in the plan? Do you, it's implied appropriately and you can take it out? I don't think it needs to go in there, but I'm glad we had a discussion about it. Okay. All right. Yep. Last question of the day, um, before we let you guys go, is, is there anything missing that you aren't already doing that needs to be mentioned here today as a potential priority? That's sort of an a question that answer. If housing is our primary objective and employee housing is our primary objective, I don't think anyone disagrees with that. The only action item I see is this discussion next week with the union. And if that goes where, what are we doing for employee housing? We have a lot of initiatives underway for employee housing. Um, we have rental housing that needs a manager. So right. one action item is potentially adding a position to manage the rental housing if it isn't a firm, which we are also trying to look into. Um, we have funding from the 2022 annual town meeting for feasibility of developing lots on Tacoma Way for town employee housing. And when Matt McEachern gets back from vacation, he and I are going to have a discussion about that. Um, Six um, fairgrounds is hopefully somehow, some way underway, which would provide employee housing. And there are other housing office and affordable housing trust initiatives around right. that are in various stages of progress with development. So there's 31 fairgrounds, there's something on Barlett Road, there's Orange Street. Um, right, which are not necessarily designated for town employees, yeah, that's right. what I was but increase to... the supply of housing overall. Yeah. So could potentially be available to town yeah. employees. Yeah. In the meantime, with respect to specific town employee housing, when a property comes up for sale, we've taken a look at it. The Affordable Housing Trust has purchased two properties that have rental housing on them. So we, and that was because there was funds available. We are paying them, you'll see on this week's um, select board pending contracts agenda, we are going to be paying them rent 
for that. It's nominal, but it's still rent to the Affordable Housing Trust for the town to rent their property, um, which is technically town property, but it's under the jurisdiction of the trust. And that is something that we'll keep doing, but it often is going to be a partnership with the trust because we don't have X amount of money laying about to just buy property for the town. And we also, again, need somebody to manage it. So, um, and, and there's the, the million dollar thing. So if that goes south, then we have to keep looking at other ways to um, deal with employee housing. And there may be some indirect ways to deal with that at the bargaining table. You also have seasonal housing mm -hmm. under development. Thank you. Summer yes. employees. Yes. So, and one other thing is in the RFPs for the Affordable Housing Trust, there the, the state does allow a, so you have local preference for up to 75% of the units. And then there's a, there's a provision for municipal employee preference. And we put that in both requests for proposals for the development. And that, that has to be approved by DHCD. We don't get to just decide that, but we are going to ask for it. So, so there is the possibility to set aside or prioritize municipal employees in the lotteries for those um, affordable housing developments. So we are, it's definitely on the radar and we're partnering with the trust. One other thing I wanted to bring up around that when it's appropriate, Julia, one thing I wanna add, and it's really, should I just say it now? I think you should. Okay. Can, can, before you do, can I just add a little yeah. bit more states? What are we doing about town employee housing right now? Thank you for bringing up the seasonal housing. We have funding for seasonal housing at the 2-4 fairground site. So theoretically, um, we get that constructed and then the seasonal, some of the seasonal housing currently being used would be able to be repurposed for year-round housing because now we'll have seasonal housing that those employees can go into. Not all of it, some of it. And um, as we build additional municipal facilities, such as our island home and or the senior center, we will be asking the designers to look at whether or not employee housing could be incorporated as a result of the design. In some cases, we aren't going to be able to fit those things on the property because of the configuration of the property or the, the space. Island home, for example, could be a little tricky because the space we have in accordance with our, it's town on land, but we have a lease with Sherburn Commons, 55,000 square feet is allocated specifically for a skilled nursing facility. That needs to include parking. And if we can get employee housing in there, great. Otherwise, there's hopefully the possibility of partnering with Sherburn to somehow jointly develop some additional housing for both of our employees. I just have to mention. And then there's also Thank the you. airport housing, which could potentially be accessible by first responders, right? First responders. Also. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the airport is working on uh, developing housing on their land. Um, and the exception to it having to be airport employees is municipal first responders could also, if there were units available, be able to live in those units. Yeah, so it's it gets to be a little tricky with um, municipal employees because of federal and state, well, federal, I guess, mostly um, income right. taxing requirements and yeah. how those all get dealt with. So it gets a little tricky in bargaining, of course. So it's just complicated. Generally speaking, having an adequate supply of deed restricted year round housing across the board solves the problem across the board mm -hmm. someday, right? Because if there's enough housing for the people we need to run the community, then the town doesn't have to own and operate housing for its employees because there's just enough housing in the community. Right. So, but that's a long term, we have a, we have a crisis today that you know, the town can help solve um, but as a long-term plan, you know, having this bifurcated market that we talk about with deed restrictions on 30% or more of properties um, that are only accessible to people who are here working, um, then, you know, those, those houses stay for, for people who are living and working here. So, so the only other thing I'd like to ask to add, 
and maybe it can replace some of the housing cards that are super detailed is um, this was a recommendation from Tucker to have a card of something that says through a variety of approaches, promote affordable and attainable. Uh, I'm just gonna say uh, home ownership opportunities for the year round community, which will meet housing needs at all income levels and lessen the burdens of government. And the reason for that phrase is that the community land trust is applying for nonprofit status under a provision in the tax code called lessening burdens of government. And our having this as a strategic priority, in other words, passing the burden of housing to a private nonprofit actually facilitates their ability to get approved under this provision. And so it would be helpful for that private effort if we had just that language in a statement in our strategic plan. Under housing, he had some yeah. rewording from the other house. So I think he sent that yeah. wording, Catherine. Yeah, 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 yeah. we've got it. Yeah. Um, and so I'm just that probably goes for housing at all affordability levels as yeah. a way of writing that activity. So this is under well, I mean, and, and I, if Tucker's still on, Tucker, does it need to be home ownership? But it could could it just be housing opportunities because. That would be more flexible around rental and or home ownership if we just left it as housing. I think that would be fine. Okay. As I, that's what I tripped over as I was reading it. So, all right. So we'll put it under the goal for housing at all affordability levels. Yep. Yeah. And this is, okay. Any? And do we, Tucker, do we want to add up to 240% AMI? Yeah, there, there there were there were a few tweaks to um, several of the goals, and that was one of them. The two hundred and forty AMI uh, under the determining greater detail the need goal that you presently have. Okay. You see that up there, Julie? So we'll yeah we'll, yeah. we'll clean that up. We, we just have this language. Yeah. We can clean it so, up. And that's before. that's an agreement. Yeah. That's a change the trust is working on and recommending across the board yeah. to match our housing bank bill upper limit. And we're also going to be asking for the same change for CPC funds so that everything's consistent across the board and the, and the buckets of money can be used to, to designate housing at multiple income levels across the properties we have. Okay, thank you. Anything else then on this? Sounds like there's pretty clear consensus that your priorities are housing, employee housing, employee housing, and employee housing. <laughs> and that will solve a multitude of sins. Okay. I have one more. Okay. And it's an it's an addition, it, it's it's not necessarily that I want it added, but I want us to think about it. And as we develop attainable, healthy, appropriate housing. I worry a lot about what happens to the substandard housing as we move people out of it. Does it just have a vacuum of people moving into it? And is their ability somewhere along the line to marry some kind of health code enforcement, maybe rental registry for year-round homes um, to ensure health and safety of our residents? Um, as we develop a supply of adequate and good housing, that it just not that, that the garbage that's out there not be backfilled um, with more people. Um, and I don't know. That's a that's a it's a big project, but um, with maybe not a lot of capacity right now. Correct. Say. But I just want to say it Put because it either for because we're creating this, and if we don't think about what happens on the back end of it. We're just going to be in the same situation we're in with people living in really unsafe and unhealthy conditions. Um, and there's there's sort of a narrative that, well, that's the way it's always been. And I ask the question, is that who we really want to be? And what can we do about it? So. She ended up not creating any additional housing. It's the flip side, no. right? Right. right. So you add two and take two away, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm just, well, I'm just That's why people. Yeah, I know, and it's a challenge. And and 
you know, I, I've thought a lot about carrots along with sticks. Yeah, I mean, are there ways like the tertiary to get some of these things legalized through a proper permitting process by some, allowing more inclusionary type of units out there? Um, you know, maybe things not, and maybe some kind of allowance where something doesn't have a full kitchen, but you can still, I, I, I don't know the exact answer. Um, that brings up a whole host of other issues, but I've said from day one, if we're going to have a rental registry, it should be all rentals mm -hmm. because if it's about safety, mm -hmm. the, the houses that I go into that don't have working smoke detectors are year round residences, never a short term rental. Um, or very rarely. How about that? Well, can we codify boarding houses? There is historical precedent for that. And the Preservation Institute is working on a project on mm -hmm. historic assessment of, of the history of housing in Nantucket. And, and boarding houses were a legitimate and very frequently used form of housing. Uh, it's it's what's happening in a de facto way now. It's just not, it's not, it's not uh, inspected, it's not legal, it's not. It doesn't have any um, requirements around it because it's not allowed, you know. And so let's codify it. And some of the things that are being done the way they are, we wouldn't lose all those units, but we would bring them into a new form of compliance and in, in a new type of housing stock. And it could be allowed in certain zones that are serviced by water and sewer and so forth. You're holding some landlords who are kind of taking advantage of it, holding accountable provide a more safe place, but this is a road for them to do it versus skating around it. And you might well, have a requirement where you have to provide everyone who lives there a bus pass. Yeah, those kind of things that are like appropriately done through the planning process. And, and it's also a DEI thing because it is marginalized people who feel they have no power to um, do anything about their living conditions often. Um, they have, they don't, they're afraid to identify themselves um, and they are powerless in our housing landscape. So it also falls into DEI perspective. Yeah, they don't qualify for rental assessment. I think it's a lot, I think it's, a, it's much improved. I think the housing is much improved from 30 or 40 years ago. I think that, uh, I think it's an issue that's going to you know, sort of take care of itself over time. I, I, I really do. Well, I, I think it's, I, I think the, some of the worst houses are, are gone and the ones that we were, you know, we were really scared about uh, are, have been sold and gone. And no, I, Matt, I can tell you. You'd have to show me. Yeah. I, I, I can, I have seen firsthand. So the, the question becomes, is this something that, I mean, it's not part of the, the plan right now to develop a, a, you know, comprehensive rental housing program, right? Or a rental inspection program. No. I don't see how we would even do it right now. Yeah. I think once the short term rental registry is established, so this it is would be something that could easily, yeah, that could gonna, easily come into the same mold. Yeah. yeah. It's not a it's not a today thing, yeah. but it's a, housing is gonna be an evolving thing. And you're gonna you're gonna fix one issue and like you said, have to fix another one before it becomes the new problem. Mm -hmm. Um in terms of going forward, I think we, we know where we are. We know there's been a few things kind of taken off the list. Um, we know what the priority is, and we know what how you all are feeling about you really want to focus on town offices. You really want to focus on solving the, the, the employment issues that you have or being an employer that's, you know, you can attract and retrain people to work on the island. Um, Libby, anything else you wanted to get from the board today? Um, well, I think, you know, understanding and, um, understanding and understanding yeah, compassion. about, <laughs> compassion about what we true. are facing day to day. And I, it's exactly what Rick and Greg said, our day to day capacity is full. And these things are, a, a lot of this, not all of it, a, a lot of it is over the top and we need to get additional resources, which is just difficult. We certainly are actively working on, on that, but um, it's stressful, especially when other completely unrelated things 
the strategic plan pop up and have to be addressed and take a lot of time. Yeah, the, the issues that come up just from running day-to-day -day operations are enormous, you know. Yeah, and, and yeah. again, we have more operations here than most towns do. No other town has a municipal nursing, still nursing facility. And that operation requires a lot of attention from administration. And if it doesn't get it, we're in trouble. There are regulatory penalties if that something happens there. There's also all the regional things that a regional entity would take care of, whether yes. it's wastewater or landfills yep. and all those different things that yep, exactly. we yeah. do, every, do do that as well. Airport. Yep. Bus system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Then I think we've got what we need for the day. Um, so what would the next step be? You, you we'll, all, we'll get you, you all will up update. Yes. Work, work it, and yep. then I, I, I'm trying to remember what we did previously. Yeah. I think you rework it. We give it to the board, and then at a meeting, they go over it one more time and, and basically adopt it. Yeah, they can they adopt it. And, and I would just kind of put out there, I think we need to, you know, when the board changes in the spring, that it's time to take a step back and, you know, assess and, and, and put forward a new plan. And I really do want to focus on, I'd like to suggest we focus on those outcome statements and what you want to achieve, and then let the, the strategy development kind of rest with the staff. Can I make a suggestion, bro? Yeah, I'm still thinking about the rental discussion we had there at the end. If our strategic plan is three to five years, right, why wouldn't we put that up there? Knowing that we're not going to get to it this next year, maybe it's two years, but if it's a five, three to five year plan, or at least if for Fort Housing Trust writes it up and we get it in the next iteration of the select board, I still want to forget about it. I know you won't. Yes. So it, to me, it's more help. <clears throat> Than affordable housing, so it's 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 the parallel process on the help and, and building enforcement side that that parallels the creation of the housing units on the affordable housing trust side. Okay. And I think to me the important the important reason to put it in would be to signal an intention and start the conversation in the community because I think this is going to be the next. There's going to be a lot of resistance from some quarters to the to an effort like this because there are people who are financially benefiting from the way things are. Um, the lack of enforcement and the lack of attention to this issue, and I think there will be some resistance. But um, I agree. I hear a lot from people. Why are we inspecting short-term rentals? The problems. There's more problems in year-round housing. So. I guess the question is, if we know we're not going to get to the next year or two, should we even put it in or not? I mean, to me, it kind of feels like a, one of the more significant equity issues. We're spending all of this time and energy on what I would call a very first world problem with short term rentals that has been fabricated. Um, where there is a true problem with long term illegal rentals that are not safe that's being, that's just being pushed under the rug. And it's, you know, it's, you know, maybe some people are like really financial benefiting, but probably a lot of people are do, are renting these things just to get by too. It's a whole nother like middle class, middle class oh. survival and lower class survival, but we're spending massive amounts of time and energy on upper class survival. It's, so, so I, that's maybe too difficult of a statement, but I, I just really think, oh, that, sure. think that there's some truth in that. So if I wrote an emerging issues, we have these emerging issues, develop a comprehensive rental housing registration and safety inspection program, put it up there as an emerging issue, something you know you need to do. You're not telling Libby to start on it in the next six months, but this is something that's come. Yes. Maybe I'm going to gonna put it under efficient town operations, not under housing. Maybe it's FY25, right? Where we, because we say, okay, we're going to at least another person in the housing office to even think about this or whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> the Al disagreed or? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Was that a but please? I think it was someone. Andrew just right. Health department and <laughs> the permitting. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I, I just, I don't know. I have a hard time. I grew up in housing that, that, you know, I grew up summers moving to housing that would be, 
you know, considered substandard and illegal and et cetera. And, uh, you know, I understand that's how, what people have, have done here. It wasn't that we weren't safe, but, we, but I just, I, I kind of see both sides of it. Having grown up and seen how people get ahead here by, you know, doing some things like that when they have to, I worry, you know, until we get a supply, I worry that we're, you know, we're, we are constraining. And I, I want it safe. And there's a difference. You know, my houses are inspected. My employee housing is inspected and et cetera. And everyone should be. But I think, you know, I think there's bigger issues for us to deal with at this point. But I could be wrong. You can prove me wrong. Well, they can't inspect without a complaint. And no one complains because they fear being homeless. <laughs> and children sleeping next to boilers is a problem that needs to be dealt with. So when, when Brooke and I started talking about this about a year ago, really getting into it, I disagreed on this completely. And when we talked about it, it's so complex. And it's so, I guess there's some things we have to do first, but we should be talking about it. We should be up there. We need to talk about it. Malcolm, from your experience on the board. Well, I was right? about to say, we we would often have to uh, condemn a property because we would find, you know, 10 people sleeping in a basement next to a boiler with no way to get out. It was unacceptable. And then I would all, we would condemn the house and then I would say, well, I feel great. And I say, but what's happening to those people? They're just gonna to go to somewhere else. So I agree, it needs to be, it needs to be addressed. So and you're right, you can't, you can only inspect on uh, someone has a complaint or there's a good probable cause. So we, we need a better inspection That's why a registration system. I'll give an example, Matt. There was a situation recently where a tenant was living in a basement with just basement ceiling windows and the water main broke and the basement was filling with water and the only door out got swollen shut. And this person was trapped in a flooding basement. The health department showed up to find the landlord kicking the door in. That happened in the last, since I've been on the Board of Health, which is three months. So yeah. it's real. Well, it was so, so it, it was, anyway. we came close to deaths a few years ago. No, I understand, I, I understand the issues, I know that, yeah. The biggest issue to me is egress and, pro and proper like functioning systems. And, and there are ways to bring substandard properties up and there may be funding, of, Sources for low or no interest loans that uh, that are that are that are then you know uh, forgiven over time. There are you know this is not an impossible problem to solve. We just need to. There has to be avenues for people to, to, to make the changes. Absolutely. So if that's not done first, then we're in trouble. And I bet half. Of, I bet most of these houses don't have COs. I bet they weren't. They don't. You know, which is hard. Is hard to get here sometimes because it's the Nantucket way, right. and you know, we don't. So so it could be as simple as you know, for proving and making sure that there's a CO, you know, and that it hasn't been, we have the right to go in and have a final inspection at some point right. on all of them. And all if, you and have if, to do is take the bed and the stove out. Well, for the, yeah. for the inspection. That's, and yeah. and if, when you were a kid, if 20% of the population lived in those conditions, it was how many people? 20% of the population now is a whole lot more people and a whole lot greater risk. Sorry, I'm. All right, anyway. I put it up there as an emergency Assessing. issue. Because I, I I heard pretty loudly I think from four folks that they're supportive of that so it will be there but again no direction to do anything about it right now mm -hmm. anything else we need to do or discuss before I let you close with a quick word and get you out of here I guess one just one question of, of our areas on the strategic plan. Which ones have the ability to have lots of partnerships, the capacity to do more partnerships, and which ones we don't really at all? Like housing, housing, coastal, that, housing, coastal resiliency. I was thinking environmentally, there's so many well functioning groups here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that are keyed in on harbor, you know, water quality, and other things that we can, they're already doing it, but what else can we do more with them? Yeah. Where housing maybe not a solid, you know, solid waste maybe not enough, but just I guess the general quadrants. Well, the a lot of organizations are dealing actively with the environment, but they're really just monitoring and studying it. Where we can perform is enforcement, and like we've heard all day, we need people to enforce. And we need to have housing. And they have housing, <laughs> they need people. So I mean, the environmental issue actually 
comes way back to uh, housing. Yeah, human services and behavioral health clearly is is the town's role is a piece of mm -hmm. a much bigger system that's on the, in mm -hmm. the private sector. But having the town engaged and collaborative and maybe providing some funding, maybe more funding than we're already providing to, to support initiatives that are actually really effective and successful. So environmental leadership and quality of life could be not outsourced, but more partnerships could be. Yeah. More so than maybe the others. Yeah, and housing too. But housing has a huge private yeah. partnership component too. And I think those are important to foster because we're already hearing we're going to need a whole nother department to manage any housing that we own, which is one of the things that, like we said a long time ago, we didn't really want to be in the home mm -hmm. housing ownership business because we knew it was going to create a whole nother department. Um, yeah. right, so where it's when it's housing. a private developer who's doing the management, it's definitely a smoother situation. Right. Preferable, actually. Okay, quick parting thought. Um, Jason, you want to go first or last? Go last. You'll go last. Malcolm, Actually, just option. parting thought. Well, I think it was uh, it was a good day. Uh, I think we identified the key issues, which we already knew were the key issues. It all comes back to housing. Uh, let's just implement. Um, I think, I think it was quite useful that, that exercise we went through on the wall and to make sure that what limited resources we have were focused on the right on the right area. So thank you for that. No, I like the prioritization. I'm glad we didn't add a lot more. This was good. Yeah, I agree with Greg and Rick that that exercise was really helpful to see. Heard you loud and clear this summer, by the way. <laughs> and um, I really appreciate the collaborative nature of the work we do as a board with one another that we can disagree emphatically and civilly with one another on things that are important to us and equally as important the collaborative nature of our work with town administration I cannot appreciate enough um, how well that partnership works Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to your microphones on. <laughs> oh, oh, I guess, I guess you, can, oh. you can go, Andrew. Right, <laughs> oh, oh, Andrew, yeah. Andrew you're in a public can, meeting. Can, can, can somebody kick him out? Andrew, I think I can kick him out. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Best of luck. Oh, no. I don't know. I think you're mute, mute all right there. Tell us how you really think. Well, well now you know. The they all have like... knew. Wow. That's unfortunate. Uh, who was? Enlightening. Were you talking? Actually, who was up there? This is right. I know. You're yeah. <laughs> like following dogs. Yeah. Come on, dog. <laughs> I was, I, I really enjoy these. I think it's a really important thing for us to do at least once a year to actually just sit at a table together and have these kind of productive conversations. Um, I, it's really helpful to have the outline essentially and um, and and doing kind of the the um, dot system to bring up what what we find are the are the most pressing things and to hear from the staff in terms. Of, I think that that's a morale bill building, a recognition building, um, saying, you know, we we operate in a bit of a vacuum sometimes of just going throughout our daily daily lives and then just coming in on Wednesday nights and being in that kind of forum, this is much different. And I think that it's super helpful to all of us. Um, and yeah, I guess, thanks. That's I agree all. with Don and I think some of the big topics we should be meeting like this and breaking down the to-do list on that topic. So if it's housing, we should be actually going into the details on it. So we know who's gonna do what, when, why, and how we're gonna get it done. And I think that's, you know, cause we, it's great to have this, but then the follow-up is okay. How do you put a plan in place that 
is followed, you know? So that's sort of, but I, I think it's important to try to, you know, to do this and I think it helps. We spend a lot of time internally, at least once a month going over the progress of the plan and implementation mm -hmm. and trying to just establish who's doing what. And part of the problem is everybody who's supposed to be doing it is like, how am I gonna do this? I already have a lot of other things to do. Um, but obviously more resources are needed, whether that is through existing firms or partners on the island or additional staff. And we're just going to have to re-look at staffing. And we already have started to do this. More, We are gonna see more and more people who are working remotely. And um, unless or until we can get sufficient housing up and running and that people are okay with living in, um, it's it's just going to continue to be a challenge, but we we're seeing you know it's a little early to tell, but some success with engaging employees who are working remotely. They will still come here from time to time, not every day, not every week, but hopefully at least once a month to check in and and see people in person. Um, I very much appreciate the board's understanding again um, of a lot of this and their willingness to be educated and informed and listen. Um, it is a real challenge for us to get out accurate information. Um, there's a lot of misinformation out there. And we're, I think you'll see with our communications plan that you'll get a review of tomorrow. We're really trying to get a handle on that and be much more proactive than we have been. And it's good to have the board support on those things. Jason. I think strategic plan in this process, I think we do it what twice a year ish. Governance plans. Governance plans. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really important because if we don't do this, we don't have these long conversations, which can be not um not everybody might love them, but we will end up just reacting on Wednesday nights and not planning. We'll just react to whatever is coming in front of us. We won't have any control and they're able to push anything. And so I think it helps us prioritize and we continue to have the conversation of what can we do with, with, the, with the capacity levels that we have. And if we don't have those conversations, we just think, you know, town staff is saying like, oh, we don't want to do what you want. We understand that, okay, if we want to do this thing, what's coming off? What's coming off you know, this year, this month? I think is when you're chair, vice chair, that is always the struggle of what's coming off the list if we're going to add this. It's a zero sum game. Sometimes the game goes lower as we lose staff in the sense of our capacity. So I think these are really important conversations and it, um, I think it helps staff, it helps the board. It, it really helps us talk about policy, which is what we're supposed to do more so mm -hmm. than there are some things that we have to talk about by charter. But I, I really enjoy this. It helps focus me. I think it gets us all on the same page. All right. Well, thank you all very much. Now it's about a half an hour early. Yeah. So appreciate right. staff. Yep. So yes. again, yes. Julia, yes. So you're gonna we'll get this back to get, you. Get some updates so that you all can adopt it. Yeah, the update right. at a at a future meeting. Okay. And we'll, we should mm -hmm. have it back to you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank you, Julia. Mm -hmm. Well, I have an idea. Uh, would it be possible for the town to say, dedicate the uh, conference room somewhere for each select person for an hour a week? Would we have people come and visit them? Oh, do oh. so like office hours? Um, okay. And then so, you like advertise, you know, Matt is on Tuesday at 10 or whatever. Um, this is not the first um, idea that has of this nature that has come up. And in fact, board members have done that. Mm -hmm. We don't have a conference room. So we would have to find one, which is fine. We could we could find one. Um, it could be here. Um, and we could certainly advertise it. Uh, I think I think you might find that it might be, uh, there might be some initial popularity and then it wanes and- um, Few people showed up for the yeah. ones that did it. Well, I'm and sure it that's the same people that would like to try it. Yeah. And then in six months, I'll tell you that was a waste of time. Yeah, some um, communities do that. And instead yeah. of having it as office hours, they, they do it as like coffee with a council member. And then you promote, I'm going to be at this place, come visit me. And it's not like formal come to an office. 
um, type of thing. So that it might be a way of doing it that doesn't. Um, it would have to be equal for all of us. Yes. When, if, when I, I mean, if everyone wants to do it, it might not be something that everyone wants to do. When, when it's happened before, it hasn't, not every single board member did it. Yeah. But we're happy to. I'd like to do it. All right, we can talk offline about we'll that. We'll talk offline, and then if I say six months from now, I'll have a time. Or well, it was quite, a, quite enlightening. Quite an experience. experience. Yeah. <laughs> well, just walking around for the last month and talking to people, it's been, I want to keep that up. Mm -hmm. Is it? Um, <clears throat> is there any reason that uh, one of us couldn't do it on Facebook on our own, like to like on Zoom, personally? No. <clears throat> No, no, so. no, you can do it absolutely. Because yeah. I thought about having sort of Zoom office hours. Yeah, yeah you can do that. Kind of like that. It's never got around to it. No, we can figure out a way. So that's less labor intensive because you just log in from home. Oh, I could just advertise that. Yeah, just, I find. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Don't Girl, hesitate. You a, do you need to hesitate adjourn? Motion to adjourn. To ask motion to, to adjourn. Yeah. 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 Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I sent you a resume.